So how much do you know about chimps, chimpanzees? Um, I know that they're vicious motherfuckers. I know that they're, they're just trying to get by in the world. I know that they can be solidary, but they're normally mostly in packs and they will normally hunt in packs. They know how to use tools. They know how to use intelligence by using traps, uh, using pack methods. They just, they just, they just, they're just smart. They're smart motherfuckers. Using traps, what do you mean? They can, they're smart enough to like set up traps and stuff to catch things. Like, like what? Like other creatures, like insects, like, or like not, food? Oh, or not so much like a trap, like a net, but more just like they'll, uh, they know how to say, they'll see an animal that they want to eat. And so they'll find a way to lead it into an area where they can ambush it. Oh. Like they're smart enough to do stuff like that. And they were talking about, have you seen like David Attenborough documentaries of, of chimpanzees oh. tearing monkeys heads off and going, Bananas. B A N A N A A. Um, no, I haven't seen that one. Well, just in general, you've seen, we just talked about it. You've seen monkeys I have. being torn apart. Yes, I've seen monkeys being torn apart and it is, at, it's it's hard to watch. It's very hard to watch. Not just monkeys, other animals as well. Like what? Their own to begin with. Right, they, yeah. And also, uh, what else did I see them rip apart? Was it a baboon? Or a, what are they called? A bonobo? Capo, a capone? Mm. But, 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 but yeah, one of those things, I think. I feel like we should, uh, now that I've got my laptop linked up, um, and for those watching, yes, sir. Uh, we should actually pull up. Oh. We're going to look up. Uh, what, oh my God. Look at this motherfucker. Woman's yeah. face and hands ripped off by pet chimpanzee. What are you doing having, having a, a pet as a chimp? A, oh my God. Because they're wild, man. You can't tame them. They're too intelligent to, to tame. I mean, if you do tame them, it's their own decision to be that way. It's not your decision. This is, that's, that's unreal. You can't, this woman has full. Uh, and I bet you this motherfucker is like, where's my chimp? Where's my baby? Bring her back to me. Oh, this is kind of sad. So we're watching this woman walk down a hallway. And her face is blocked. Um, with a with like a cane, she needs to help to walk because she's blinded from the ch chimpanzee. Yeah. And they're trying to re reenact it. This is 13 minutes of this. You know what I found out about a lot of documentaries? What's a lot of the animal sounds you hear is actually dubbed over. It's not the real sounds. Oh, really? Because it's really hard to get really good quality yeah, sound. I bet. So what they do is they find other recordings and they just put it over the top. Because you know, they'll put, I've seen this, they'll put cameras and then they'll leave the cameras in nature by themselves. Yeah, so they don't have the things to capture sound. Or if they do have the sound, it's just from the camera. They just, cause to catch capture good sound, you need like a good boom in there. You need like real good mics nearby and right. you just can't do that with nature. So yeah, they kind of ruined nature documentary. Cause I've been learning a lot about uh, uh, Foley, which is uh, doing sound for movies, for documentaries and such. Yeah. And uh, that's what I found out. A lot of uh, a lot of shit, especially David Attenborough stuff. A lot of it is just not what it really was captured. Well, uh, the animals are real, and like the, the sounds, they're just not at that time. Exactly. Okay. Yo. These motherfuckers. Not far away, the neighbors are feeding in the fig tree, oblivious to the approaching dangers. The patrol moves off with a sense of purpose. They must remain silent until they close in on their rivals. Bro, look at them. We used to be them. We're just watching yep. a dozen, two dozen, just little chimps on all fours, quadruped. Just Yeah, this is this is legitimately us. We used to hunted packs. To intimidate their opponents, the aggressors scream and drum on buttress roots. We're just They're at the violent stage of evolution. So are they attacking another tribe here? Another chimp uh, a troop, I think they're called. It looks like it. And they are just going off. Chimp on chimp. Shaking the trees, climbing up the trees. Getting into battle position. Very territorial chimps are. Oh, yes. Several males corner an enemy female. It's a ferocious attack, and she's lucky to escape with her life. Gee, she escapes seven of them. Oh, those noises, bro. That's so primal. Just primal chimp. Oh, Jesus. Just fell all the way from the top of the tree down to the ground. Others are not so fortunate. Yeah, that one died for sure. And you see their mouths? 
<laughs> and we would have been like that as well, right? <laughs> Oh, that's right. They'll eat their own. Yep. Oh my goodness. Let nothing go to waste. Wow. Chimpanzee. Oh my God. They just eat their own. Nothing. It's nothing. The reason they cannibalize the chimp is not fully understood. Because not many other animals do it. <laughs> he said extra protein. Yeah, that definitely will do it. I think they just Man. they just reached a stage of evolution where they realize the value of like, you know, if there's something there that helps them, even if it's their own, it's like making use of their own tribe in a way. Like they couldn't, they couldn't you know, nullify the death, so just use it. I mean, and survival, just the most basic of survival. Just, and I looked it up again because with a, a recent podcast I did with Amelia, I said 98% of the DNA of humans is shared with chimpanzees. It's actually around 99%, yeah. right? Which is incredible. They're our, our closest living ancestors. Yeah, which is why I'm, I'm of the belief that we used to be pretty much exactly like that. When we were at our, just before our Neanderthal stage, like just before, I think I think the Neanderthal stage is the next evolutionary stage of what they're going to be entering. Because if you look at like maybe a lot more hundreds of years ago, chimpanzees weren't like they are now. Like they're at a stage where they're starting to think more like that. Oh, so we actually saw, I don't know, uh, some people may have saw, seen, um, there was this photo of a, a monkey or a, a, with a spear, chimp with a spear hunting fish. That some uh, believe that they're actually, they're, they're graduating into the next stage of evolution and they're actually they learning to hunt. Yeah. With spears and tools. I can see them probably in the next like few hundred years getting to the stage of maybe being conscious, like conscient. Well, hold on, hundreds of years? You know how long it took us? We're talking- Okay, okay, maybe thousands, maybe thousands. Maybe millions, dude. Oh, it was an orangutan from Borneo. Oh yeah, orangutans are smart, man. This here. I support that shit. You support what? Yeah, I put money every month into the orangutans, man. They're, they're, they're endangered. I am- um, They're beautiful. People feel a different type of way about zoos, right? Mm. I think we've maybe talked about this. And uh, I think I, at Singapore Zoo, I went twice when I was living there. And in one hand, what other scenario would you get to see animals, wild animals, well, not wild anymore, they're domesticated, but in close contact within 20 meters, 50 meters. Sometimes you can even sit right next to them. Like I was, I got a, we got a photo with an orangutan. And you got to see them being fed, mm -hmm. right? And it feels so strange in so many ways. It does. It's like there's this amazing power and, you know, amazing like emotional side to it. But there's also the other side of knowing that it's not the way things are meant to be. Mm. But at the same time, a lot of those zoos, they're there for a, as for a habitat for them to, to breed because a lot of them are endangered species and they do have a lot of successful breeding in a lot of these zoos. Whereas then a lot of these zoos might not have better living conditions or might not have better feeding conditions. So there's always the the ifs and ahs and the the balance of is it the correct thing to do? Yeah, it's really tough. Um, I think people like to set, keep, keep it like a black and white line down the sand, but there's grey. There's a lot of grey. And you, I, I I try and ask zoo. I try and talk to zookeepers every time, and you go to the um, the talks, the animal talks, and there's education there. It's like you get to learn about what actually they're doing. Um, and what I heard is that a lot of poor Asian countries, Bali, Thailand, terrible conditions for these animals. Yeah. Whereas more developed countries, Australia, um, Singapore, seem to have a Sydney, obviously I'm just getting another city, just seem to have much, much better conditions and programs in place. Yeah, I think they, one, they have more money so they can afford to build better enclosures. Yeah. And, uh, but I guess with the, like you said, Bali and Thailand, just because the tourism rate is so high up there, it's just, I don't know. It's a, it's, 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 a, it's an interesting one. Like do, would they have the money to make better enclosures for these animals or is the money they just make not enough and they just put it towards other stuff? Yeah, well that's that's a question of like, gut, what's the government doing? Is that a priority for them? And yeah. what are their laws and regulations? But I wanted to look up, okay, so we're gonna look up 
I'm actually re- about to release a book summary of Sapiens. Have you heard oh, of the no. book Sapiens? No, I have not. It's a really, really good book on the history of humankind. Mm. Okay, goes through just stages of evolution and how humans have evolved through the cognitive revolution, the industrial revolution, and you know the, the utility of money. Like, how did money come about? Um, how did religion come about? Like, wh- how was that useful in a society? Uh, and all these different concepts. Okay. I can see how both of those would work. Which ones? Money and religion. To me, money just brings up order because you get to a stage where, you know, because obviously you go from once you're conscious, then like, it's not just about the pack. You're not thinking about hunting, fucking and sleeping. You're thinking about, you want more. And that leads to a lot of disorder and money is a way to bring order. So I, I get why money's there. Of course, it's, it doesn't solve it in a positive way. I mean, look, look at our world, but it does solve a lot of issues. Whereas religion just gives you an answer. Cause of course, once you're not thinking about those three things again, you're like, fuck, how did I get here? What am I doing here? Religion answers that. It gives meaning to some of the unknown. Yeah. Like I'm still of the belief that none of that shit is true. But for those that do believe in it, it brings them a sort of peace. Mm. It gives them a sort of more value to their life. So I, I, I think that's what my understanding of why money and religion exists. And that, to me, that has utility then. It has yeah. usefulness. It, it does. In the inside cover of his book, he put fire, gave us power, Mm. gossip, helped us cooperate, agriculture, made us hungry for more, mythology, maintained law and order, money, gave us something we can really trust, Mm. contradictions, created culture, beautiful, science made us deadly. Yeah, just, it's really good because with one word, which can mean not just one sentence or one word. It could be a, it could be a book in itself. He's just enabled it down to just one or a few words. Yeah, it's quite beautiful. It really is. It really is. Yeah. I like contradictions created culture. That one's powerful. What does that mean to you? It's kind of like when people may have a disagreement on things or maybe not just a disagreement, but a, a different feeling on things that creates culture because yeah. you have like, I prefer my food spicy. I prefer my food sweet. Yeah. Culture. And you go to different places and the, obviously the culture is wildly yeah. different. Fashion, language sport, just everything that is pretty big in human culture, music, you can boil it down to culture. Mm-hmm. And I really hope that it sticks around because a lot of people are in the ways that the more that we're evolving, the more we're becoming the same. But I really hope that we get to an age where there'll be even more different culture, but a lot more understanding and empathy. That's interesting. I think, you know, the population is continuing to grow and grow. It um, will. And th- with that comes more you think comes more diversity, but it depends where people grow up. Mm, you know, we've never seen more multicultural relationships ever, mm. right? People are now more mixed than ever from like a lineage, ethnicity wise. And so you have these blends of beautiful cultures and you've never been able to travel more no. and see different cultures. Which is what one thing I really want to do, but that is money and time. Yeah, Time. You, you you use money to buy time or save time yeah. and create experiences. Yeah. I mean, it's how you got here. Money bought a ticket to get you from Sydney to Melbourne. 100. And then money gets you a ticket. I know you've always wanted to go to America. Still do. It will happen. It will happen one day. Has to. Has to. <laughs> Japan, Europe, oh, Africa. Japan. I want to, bro, I think if yeah. I get to a stage where I'm financially secure, I just want to take like, four to five years off and just travel the motherfucking world. Like I'm thinking like in my forties, I feel like if I could travel the world in my forties, I'm still youthful enough mm. that I still have my wits about me and my physicality about me if I'm good with myself. Yeah. But of course you're probably at an age where you have, you know, you would have found out a lot more by yourself by well, then. You don't want children still, Fuck no. right? So that, that allows you still a massive flexibility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To give you that room to go forties, fifties, yeah, whatever. But- Five years, travel for five years. Man, but why couldn't, I wonder, what if a gun was to your head and you had to make it work, you had one week to make this work, to sort out all your plans, gun to your head, you're gonna travel for the next five years. Like, what would you do? Uh, How would you make that work? I feel like, can I go to other people or do I have to think yeah. to myself? No, no, you I would go. People. I would go to homies I know that have been successful. Yeah. And I'd be like, look, this isn't the way I want to do it, but let me know how you did this shit and I'll do it the same way. Okay. So I'd be, I'd be forced to live a, a life the way I wouldn't want to live it, but it would get to me to my goals. 
Because I'm all about living life by making my goals my way, my mistakes, my actions. But I do know there are people out there that I could just go to and it would make things easier for me. But then where's the motherfucking fun in that, you know? Where's the story in that? Right. That's someone else's story. Well, there's um, the struggle yeah. of doing something. The struggle of getting to something. is uh, What do they say? Like struggle gives life meaning yeah. in some ways. Like I enjoy the struggle. Not all the time, of course, mm. but when you achieve something through the struggle, it means like so much more and you would have normally learned a lot more from it. From my experience. I think from all of you, like to me, that's pretty undoubtable. Yeah. Like undeniable, I should say. But some people don't make it out the struggle. No, a lot of people don't. I feel like less make it out than they than more do. Like success is glorified. Like we see mm. the movie stars, we see uh, successful artists and musicians, but these people represent like 0.1%, 0.11% yeah, of the population. It's so tiny. And how do you measure success as well? Right. There's money, influence, power, what? Um, for some people, success is raising their family, sending everybody off to university, and then just nurturing. Yeah. And then for others, it's having the biggest mansion money can buy, having their own island, having powerful friends. Like everyone has... Hey, what is? How do you measure success? What is success to you right now? Success to me. Let me let me let me pause you. Let me hold up. <laughs> success to me has to do with uh, yeah, it's a big one. I'll touch on money because we brought it up before. First mm. of it, from the money aspect, like like how much money? Well, it's not. It's less to do with a specific exact number. It's more to do what range of income or profit will allow me to live the most flexible lifestyle, mm. free life that I desire. What does that mean? Well, I want to be able, for example, what you just said to me, I want to be able to travel for five years and just go. Well, yeah. guess what I want to be able to do? I want to be able to fund that for friends and family. Yeah. If I have friends and family who have dreams like that and like, I'm like, they're, they're, you know, and you can help so help someone solve a problem or you can just, you know, rent a something and then bring help. You, maybe you're going to get married in like a tropical island. I want to be able to fly everybody out. Yeah. I don't want to have them worry about whether they can come or not because of the money of buying a ticket and accommodation. When I was growing up, it was like just enough money where I didn't have to worry about looking at the bill at a restaurant. Yeah. Right? I, that's fortunate. Where I, That's where I'm at now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm not at the point where I can fly out people. I can, you know what? You want to go to America? Well, I do too. I'm going this X, Y, Z date. You want to come? Cool. Fuck I yeah. got you. Yeah, I got right? you. I want to be able to do that. Mm. It's, it's a frustrating thing because it's like, it's a patient process. So financial freedom, freedom of decision-making where you've ticked Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Have you heard of that? No. Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Maslow's hierarchy of needs is like these needs that all humans um, need to what? Needs, physiological needs, psychological needs. I see there's a good old triangle, self-actualization. Some of them are different. This one. This is the, the, the this is the standard one. So yeah, on the yeah, bottom, yeah. we are, I was just talk about it for people listening. Physiological needs is the base, yeah, right? That's what you just need. That's just human needs. Food, water, warmth. Okay. At people in like really poor countries, they're just struggling for this every day. Yep. Safety needs, security, safety. And now this is the difference to me between living in like a ghetto and a safe area. Mm -hmm. All right. Some people can't do this. No. The next. Belongingness and love. Psychological. Relationships, friends. You can't, you're can't. you not really thinking that much about relationships and friends when you can barely put food on the table. It's true. 100. Right. You're actually thinking of putting food on the table for your family and friends. I guess that's why with evolution, it makes me think that when you get to a stage where all those things come so naturally and you're not constantly having to work hard to get it, then that's when the next level comes in. Mm. 
We have esteem needs, prestige and feeling of accomplishment. This yeah. comes through meaningful work and contribution in the world. Fitting in. Uh-huh. And then the last one, self-actualization. This is where I live a lot of the time because um, yeah. I can afford to. Exactly. Achieving one's full potential, including creative activities. It's what you're doing in your, with your music mm-hmm. course. That is self-actualization, correct. All right. You could also come into esteem as well. See, look, I feel like I live most of my life in the, the yellow, blue, and red. Okay, cool. Whereas the purple and green, uh, the I, I mean, I have been in the purple green at certain periods of my life, but never to a never to a, a huge degree like a lot of other places would live with every day. Right. So money helps solve many of these problems. Yes. What else is meaning? Uh, what, what else is like success to me? Whether what I'm doing is contributing to the world, mm. I'm being useful. Am I being useful to the world? I would say Solving yes. a problem. And because you can say, yeah, you want to help people, but what's more accurate is like solve interesting complex problems. Mm. Like Elon Musk, Lex Friedman, like these guys inspire me so much to think about bigger problems. I was doing X, yeah. Y, Z. I'm thinking too small. Yeah, they're thinking like, like some people don't understand a lot of what these uh, bigger figureheads are doing because they're just like, why are you thinking about this now? They're thinking hundreds of years in the future. They're not thinking 10 years into the future. No, people it, don't get that. No, no. Yeah, and there's very rare people who think like that. Mm, but but uh, I was going to say, I think a lot of what you do is good. A lot of the conversations you have, it's very, uh, what's the word? Educational. Yeah. You're educating a lot of people on things which can just help improve your mental and physical health. That's a lot of what you do. Absolutely. Yeah. Which is important. I... I'm very curious to educate myself and then know that education can be very valuable to others mm. and that conversations can spark more education and more realizations like this. Definitely. Fulfillment and meaning in life is very important to me. And so to me, like being successful, like those things uh, need to be continually pulled on in order for me to feel satiated, whether I'm contributing, whether I'm feeling fulfilled in the work. And another thing that I'm realizing in the last year and two that I didn't realize before is connections with people, meaningful connections with friends and family, like relationships, Mm. like life is about people. Life is about people when it comes down to it. It's about the memories you create and just the people you share it with. And so, yeah. Those are some thoughts. What about you? How I measure success? Yeah. Um, was that the question? Was success how I... Yeah, you said success. Did I say success? You did. True. Uh, for me, it's mostly what we just said. It mostly just comes down to people. If I can help people more than myself, that's, that's more success. Help people more than yourself. Yeah. Right. Like, of course I want to help myself and my goals, but I deem other people's goals more important than my own, mm. which is probably not the healthiest trait to have. But I just feel like, you know, we, one of the biggest things is a lot of people try and do this shit alone. I actually remember watching, um, oh, who was it that said it? I think it was Arnold Schwarzenegger in a, one of his interviews. He said like, for motherfuckers that think that I did this alone, like, I hate that shit. Like, I had so much help to get to where I was. And I remember there was a few videos of him just, like, like having, like, meals with, like, a lot of his, like, friends at, like, the gym that he went to. Like, yeah, you can have a look it up. It's just, like, just sharing a meal with them and just, like, he, like I think it's a big thing. Like, I, I've i constantly, a lot of my life, tried to do a lot of shit by myself. And now I'm just, I'm, in the last, like, maybe, like, seven, eight years as I've started to actually just help, like, lean on others to get to where I am. And I'm already, like, a lot closer to my goals. Because you're leaning on the people around you. Yeah. And then, and I, that's why I constantly am just, I'm constantly just trying to do the same for them as well. Like I'm, I feel like if I give to people more so for myself, then they'll do the same for me. And it's actually honestly been very much like that. That's beautiful to yeah. realize that. So that's, a, I think that's a big part of how I measure success. Just that and the memories that creates and the stories that that collects. Yes. Memories and experiences. Yeah. Like on your deathbed, will you wish that, I don't, you'll want more experiences. You'll wish you spent more time. We'll wish we spent more time with each other. Yeah. Connecting, creating memories, adventuring. 
Exactly. And it might not be the most efficient way or the way to achieve money to achieve these things as well, but mm. it's a way that I feel where constantly in every year of my life, I'm going to have shit to remember and tell. Yeah. Because I, I know I've got people out there that sacrifice what I'm talking about to get money and use that money to fund this shit. Yeah. But they lose themselves in the process or they'll, they'll, just, they'll just be so different or so sad. It's just like, I don't think it's worth it. I mean, for some of them, it is worth it because- they'll get to a stage where they're financially secure and then they just get back to there. But right. For me, I don't want to go through that. I want to do it my way. Yeah. And look, if Makes your sense. way works and is working and you ex- and we accept the consequences to that way maybe being different, maybe it's slower. Oh yeah, it is slower. Like as long as you accept those consequences, then you can live and sleep at night. Yeah, that's the homie. The young, the young Arnold. Yes, yeah, the homie. We're gonna place it in the plate. Dollars in the pocket, then some sweaty clothes in the gym bag. But let me tell you, I had this one little apartment, and on Thanksgiving, the bodybuilders from Gorge Gym came to my apartment, and they brought me pillows, dishes, silverware, all of the things they didn't have. None of us can make it alone. None of us. Not even the guy that is talking to you right now. It was the greatest bodybuilder of all times. <laughs> Not even He's being so the jacked, the bro. And went back in time to save the human race. <laughs> Not even me that fought and that killed predators with his bare hands. <laughs> I always tell people that you can call me anything that you want. But don't ever, ever call me a self-made man. I love that so much. an impression that we can do it alone. Mm. None of us can. The whole concept of the self-made man or woman is a myth. I would have never made it in my life without the help. So this is why I don't believe in a self-made man. Why I want you to understand that is, is because as soon as you understand that you are here because of a lot of help, then you also understand that now is time to help others. Right. That's what this is all about. That's it. I love that. And he just, he brings forth his biggest achievements in life from his movies to his bodybuilding and he relates that all back to the people that helped him get there. Isn't it beautiful? And, and the message is, if there's no such thing as the self-made man, right? People help you along the way. That means then you got to help others. Just help others. So when I'm at school or if I'm at work or if I'm just chilling, as much as I value my spare time, if I know that I can help people, I'll motherfucking help people. Right. Even if I don't want to, if I know that it's going to help them for a good reason, I'll fucking do it. Because that's me. Yeah. And some people that's in their character and some people you got to learn. Like exactly. I've, I've had to learn that. And that's the beauty of humanity. Everyone's, everyone's different. This won't work for everybody, but it works for me. I don't know. It won't work for everybody. Helping others won't work for everybody. Oh, I think it would, but not everyone would agree with that. And right. I feel like other people would find ways that would work for them. It might not be healthy, it might be due to be right, the upbringing right, right, right. or it's a complete different personality. I don't know, but I don't know. As humans, we all different. We're all the same, but we're different. Yeah, 99% DNA of chimps, but like so much of di- uh, diversity across the spectrum. Yeah. Oh, and, and you, you brought up how you wonder what humans would, how humans would change or something in the coming future. Yeah. Like what we'll look like? What did you say? Yeah, what we'd look like or like, will we be more the same with, uh, with our language, with our culture? Like we were mentioning before, right the way that we look. Like uh, I remember there was a South Park episode which made fun of it where everyone looked like pretty much Indian Asian and everyone looked the same and everyone sounded fucking weird. And it was, just, it, was, it was just a cool take in it because if we kept going the way we were going and we kept breeding the way we're going, that is eventually probably how we, we'd all look and we would lose a lot of culture. I wonder, but how would it get there? How would it get us to all looking and, and the culture being so similar? Well, if we constantly keep breeding it the way we're going and the largest races are the ones that the DNA will eventually become the, I guess the more strongest of yeah, DNA. Dominant. So we'd eventually wipe out, not entirely, but pretty much like other genes. Interesting. Well, I think the two main, the two most predominant, uh, Chinese and American or-, or I'd, I'd say Chinese and Indian. Indian? India, oh, India's huge. India has the population of India is like what eight billion or something? No, not eight billion, like four billion. Eight billion. <laughs> it's it's a lot. 
I'm pretty sure India has the highest population in the world. It's more than China now. Let's have a look. I'm pretty sure that the one third of the world's population is like China and India. So China is actually a little bit more. Oh yeah, yeah. Slightly, oh, very slightly. slightly. Right, but they're very similar. Yeah. Look how, oh my goodness. Look in comparison to America. Yeah, man. Like, look at that. America like, seems so big, right? White people, we don't kinda, even, we're gonna be wiped out, man. <laughs> we, we don't even talk about India. No, we don't. People, people don't realize. We're looking at a graph, right? And, and but look how quickly India is growing compared to China. Yeah, the rate of growth of India is really big. It'll overtake it for sure. Yeah, it's on the path to, just about to. Mm -hmm. um, 1.38 billion, China's 1.4 billion. United States, 330 million. So China and India together is 2.8 billion. What's the population of the world? It's about eight. So 2.8, 7.9. So 2.8, so that's around to three to eight. So three eighths. So technically India and China are about three eighths of the world population, which is huge for two countries alone. That is huge. What about Australia? Australia's like the population <laughs> of like, uh, I think California and- Yeah, what, Australia's what, like 18 million, 20 million? No, about 24. 24. Um, it's quite a lot. I remember when I was born, I think Australia was around 16 million. So we've, we've grown a lot in like the 30 years I've been alive. And Han, China, Han Chinese, whoa, Mandarin is the world's most spoken language. There you yes, go. Sir. It's like, there's a, there's a reason. If you're gonna learn a language, and you want to stay ahead of the curve, and you like you're a businessman or woman, right? And you you want to trade with, and, you know, do trading and and, and um, business with other countries. It's probably a good idea to learn Mandarin. Oh, yeah, I've thought about it. One of my one of my goals actually is when I finish school to pick up a language, and I think Mandarin would be a really good one. Wow, it would be it'd probably be like five to ten years to like pick it up well, but well, it depends how consistent you are. Do you get a teacher? Are you doing it every day? Do you immerse yourself and go to China? That's that's exactly how do you go about it, right? <laughs> But I also kind of want to learn French, <laughs> but that, that's only helpful in certain countries. But still though, you, it's probably the one you want to do the most is Mandarin. It's probably, probably going to be the one you stick to and yeah. are most excited to learn about. Exactly. So two thirds of the world's population live in Asia. Now we have to remember Asia, India also encompasses Asia. I actually just learned this not long ago because I'm an idiot. Yeah, two thirds. That, that goes to show that that's probably going to be the dominant gene eventually. Wow. The percentage share of India, China, and the rest of South Asia in world population have remained on similar levels for a few thousand years of recorded history. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. World, uh, the fertility rate of the world is estimated 2.43 children per woman. Which is quite a lot. And with the fertility rate uh, in China, I believe one reason that explains their decreasing population is because their fertility rate is going down. Yeah. Having less babies. I don't know if they still have that one child policy. They got rid of it. They got rid of that? They kept it for, for a while, but it is not in place anymore. I'm, I'm fairly sure. I see everybody like trips about, and I think rightfully so, about mandates and everything going on right now over the last couple of years. But dude, imagine being told you can't have more than one child. Imagine someone telling you and mandating by law that you can only be impregnated once and that's, or you can only have a baby once. In your life. Oh, it's it's hard because it's right in the way that the world's overpopulated and the resources aren't enough. So I get why, but you just can't tell people to do that. As much as it's the right thing to do, it's like, I don't know. I feel like, you know, a woman's body is her own decision. Right. Well, com she, communist China don't really care about that. If, she, if a woman wants to have more than one child, no one should be able to stop them from doing that. Be it if the world doesn't need it or not. That's their decision. Except- in China, well, it used to be in China. But, but you know what happened in China is people wanted, if you're a, a female child, it wasn't a good chance of you a, 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 accumulating to something. But if you're a male child, there's a higher chance you'd bring more to your family. So a lot of women, child, children that were born, they would just kill them straight away. They would leave them in the right. street. They would leave them in the streets. So many young children that were women would just die because the mother would rather a male child. It's, it, it was fucked, man. It was so fucked. Jeez, look at this, it's a Google search. It does trying to kill, still kill babies. Um, yeah, the one child policy, like yeah, just as much as I, I understand why they want to do it, it, it wasn't the right thing well, to do. Let's, oh, if I'm gonna look at Wikipedia. So I don't, many innocent motherfuckers died. 
implemented between 1980 and 2015. Mm-hmm. That's a that's 35 years. 35 years. Okay, so okay, here we go. You're right. China's family. Oh, it was um, the fears of China's family planning. Policies began to be shaped by fears of op- overpopulation. Officials mm. raised the age of marriage. What? Is there a legal age of marriage in Australia? Yes. I believe it is- 16? 16 for a woman and 18 for a male. All right. I think so. Oh no, sorry. That's to have sex. I'm pretty sure it's 18 for both. 18, I think is the, the youngest you can get married. Legal age marriage, Australia. Yeah, I think it's 18. There you go. Oh no, it is 16 to 18. But, oh no, it says, yeah, at least 18 years old. But I'm pretty sure for sex, a woman can be 16 and a male can be 18. Okay. The policy was modified beginning in the mid-1980s to allow rural parents a second child if, oh, if the first was a daughter because they wanted to encourage boys. Yep. Wow. Because uh, <laughs> male and, like, basically whole, the, the issue in China, like, man, they've still got a lot of shit to work on. Equality is still a thing. It's just a different culture, man. I, I, yeah, like, it's a whole different culture. It's just, yeah. unless you, I haven't been there, but I've been to Hong Kong and Singapore. And uh, I think the best way to appreciate and gain perspective and empathy and remove, minimize judgment, we judge so easily. Yeah, yeah. Is just go and observe. You realize, oh wait, these are people too. And they just, most of them just grew up in this system. Yeah, they don't know anything different. It's fascinating, though, how different culture is. It is, man. And even though I grew up in Australia in a very, like, a very thankful situation, I still grew up around things which I didn't agree with. Now, I know you. You believe the world is overpopulated. Yes. Currently, or it's getting, or is going to be. Currently, and is going to be more so. I think right now we're definitely overpopulated for the resources that we're. Giving like, have you seen how much resources go to waste as well? well? Waste is a different thing. We're very wasteful as humans, right? But, but in general, as humans, yes, I believe that we have too many people on this planet. Okay, I would like to explore this because it's something I have looked into, um, just to understand deeper. Because mm-hmm. it's an important problem: resources. It's like it puts pressure on then us current humans to be like, okay, we need to do a better job being efficient, and then solving complex problems to then make things more efficient. Yeah. Like, maybe I should be an engineer then. Maybe I should be, you know, like if we really care about this, maybe we should be helping solve the problem. So this graph here shows the world's population from 1700 to 2100. I have a, yeah. a document called Arguments For and Against. All these different ideas that, you know, eating meat versus eating plants, yeah. um, abortion versus not, yeah. Um here, overpopulation or not. So this is one of them that I compiled. Mm-hmm. So we have our world in data. Like, look at this, 1,700, 600 million people. Yep. Because that's the thing. Like when one becomes two, those two become another two. Those two. So right. the, the larger we grow, the quicker we grow. So it's only going to keep getting bigger, faster. Assuming fertility rate doesn't decrease. Yes, assuming fertility rate doesn't decrease. But it is decreasing. Y- you knew that. Yeah, so yes. it's been decreasing. Very good. It is decreasing. Which I'm thankful for. So point is very small. Can you see that? 0.04%? Yes. Can you read that out loud? Yes. Uh, 0.04% was the average population growth rate between 10,000 BC and the year 1700. Jesus Christ. Okay. I don't even have a concept for that. Uh, <laughs> 1800, we reached 1 billion. And then- by the mid nine no 1925 1928 we reached two billion mm-hmm. and then this exponential curve for those just listening is just shoots up yeah I think it was after the war uh yes the war was between what the 1930s to 1947 yeah 1947 I think so I remember something happened here that after World War Two they encouraged families I guess it was a safer time people were more <sighs> secure. Mm. To have families, do you know why there was a boom? Is this that's called the baby boomers, right? Yes, I think I think a lot of it was what's the what's the American dream? The American dream is to have a stable job, have a family, right? But when the war was on, that wasn't it wasn't it wasn't you know people didn't really do that as much because there was constantly war on, and a lot of people were fighting that war. So I feel like that when the war finally ended, 
people were celebrating so much that that it ended that they just want to celebrate. And a lot of the celebrations was through having a family. Right. And so I just think that there was a massive increase of babies because there was peace. Wow, that's very good. It literally, like exactly. I think you're on the money because mm. Business Australia article, Australians were confident the future would be one of comfort and prosperity. Mm-hmm. Corporations grew larger, more profitable. Goods were more plentiful. And then they began incentive. I don't know when they began incentivizing their paying parents to have children. It was like a couple grand or something. I don't know if you remember that. No, I, I wasn't aware that people were getting paid to have children. Yeah, yeah. It was um, when, when my parents had, like during um, my parents' generation when they had a me, mm. it was like that. I don't know, it was thousands of dollars. Uh, but that's a strange thing. It's like you're going to have a, if that's even a predominant thought to have a child because of money by the government, maybe don't have a kid. Yeah, but also a thousand dollars back then could have been like ten, twenty thousand dollars. I think that's an exaggeration of inflation. That's massive. All I, all I know is that when my dad was younger, he could buy a pie for five cents, and now the pie a pie in would Melbourne? cost. Did he grow up in, no, no in Adelaide? Adelaide. Or wow. he could get like a he get like a drink for ten cents and a pie for five. That's cents. right. And newspapers. And there were ten cent and, and sorry, they're one and two cent pieces. So the currency back then in Australia was a like a lot lower, man. Sorry, I honestly think a thousand dollars would be like twenty thousand, because from five cents to like five dollars, that's a inflation <laughs> is huge. Inflation is massive, and, and it's and it's still going up. Yeah, it is, and that's another topic. But we're gonna yeah. talk about an inflation of humans. Humans. <laughs> Humans, and it all started with talking chimps. Yeah, that's right, chimpanzees <laughs> tearing the heads of monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> that's me, baby. That's good. Was there a chimp in the room? Yes, sir. So, annual growth rate kicks through the roof after oh, World War Two. Yep. And then all of a sudden, it hits its peak. You know where is that? Nineteen sixty-eight. Oh, there we go on a wave. And then all the way. I don't know what happened then but I went all the way down. Maybe there was a financial crisis somewhere here. I don't know. <laughs> all the way down. Da, da, da. And, but world population still increases naturally. So we are here 2021. Yeah. We're sitting at 79.9 billion. And then they assume at the same rate of growth, oh, sorry, at this assumed rate of fertility rate, mm. 9.7 billion by 2050. Ten, oh, sorry, basically 11 billion by 2100. Mm-hmm. It's a, I don't even think about, I don't even know how to think about that number. Like it's, we have no concept for no, that amount of people. I, I imagine it as ants. Yeah. Cause ants are tiny and I can imagine them. So I'm like imagining, okay, this is like a thousand ants. Okay. This is like 10,000 ants. And then I just keep like spreading it out and I, I'll, I'll just look at, I'll say, I'll look at a hill or I'll look at the sky and I'll just imagine how much it would cover. And I can't fathom 11 billion, that it would be this room would be covered completely in ants. And I still don't think it would be 11 billion. I don't think, it doesn't seem that we were even built to understand the scale of that magnitude. No. Because hunter gatherers, if you read sapiens, if you understand evolution, we, we would uh, operate in, in bands and tribes of like 80-ish, maybe to 100 max, before we become like, we, that cultural revolution came about. Yeah. So if the majority of history was operating in like troops and groups of roughly these amount of people, well then you would know most people somewhat well. 80 people? It's like, how you know how many people are in your intake at Abbey Road? Um, people? Like that I talk to every day? Not in your classes that you'll see. Maybe um, 30 people. I'd say every day I'll see six, one, Six to five, 11, maybe like 15 people. Okay, cool. So th- you know them pretty well. Like you get to know like those 15 people like decently well. I'd say I know probably six to seven of them pretty well. Right. Yeah. But you like, you're familiar. You have connections with them, like 15. Yeah. You know, 67 pretty well. How the hell are we going to then scale that to billions to even understand? I mean, you can scale it, but your, your mind... Your mind actually cannot imagine what that would look like because you'd have to. It would take it would take probably years to just get your brain to slowly scale it because you can't just envision that without imagining what it starts off as. It's it's I, I wouldn't say it's impossible. I would just say it's extremely hard. Okay, so your contention is that resources is the issue. Yes, we're going to be using too many resources. And then what? Run out? 
Yes, run out. Or the, that's why a lot of people are finding other ways to use resources like the ocean. We have so much water. Is there a way that we can use that as power? Is there a way that we can use that to use it as water? I know, what's it called? A cell? There's a, there's a desalination. Desalination. Yeah. Like surely there's a way that we can use that water as well, but also we have to, and we also don't know anything about our oceans. So we still have so much to learn about what happens underneath. Can we use anything with there? Like the, like the bottoms of the oceans? Like One thing that does seem becoming more apparent as I slowly understand it more, my very rudimentary understanding, I'm talking about nuclear power, mm -hmm. right? I'm an idiot, right? I understand very, very little. Oh, the same. But from people much smarter than me, even my, um, my brother, who's uh, doing a, a science degree, studying physics and chemistry and all this nerd oh, shit. Awesome. It's great because then he did an assignment on nuclear power and arguments for and against it. And then I listen to Elon Musk. I go all the way to the top. I go, okay. Uh, and then I hear this guy and this girl. I'm like, hmm. Seems like a lot of the fear about nuclear power is based on one event, uh, one catastrophic event, and much of the safety protocols and is that procedures. Chernobyl? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Much of the safety protocol procedures and ways to manage waste are really viable and really effective, much more effective, and give disproportionate value. Like the risk to reward, like the reward is so high for what we get from nuclear power. It's correct. Compared to a lot of the other reasons we do, like through coal, yeah. nuclear is just like hundreds, if not thousands of times, so much more expansive and stable. I think for reading, I'm the same as you. Like I've, I've known about it, but I haven't done enough research to really, uh, to really have a good idea about it. I wonder if there's something that can. But I do think the risks, the risks are worth it compared to where we are right now. But I, I don't know how much pollution they put back into the world is the other question. They, so what's coming out of the top? Oh, maybe I have it here. Nuclear. Oh, I have nuclear weapons. I see it. This is something I feel strongly about. I had someone on my on podcast mm. um, from the, was it the UN? Red Cross talking about that they had a they were putting in a plan to denuclearization de uh, pact around the world and getting countries to sign it. Mm. And if there's one global threat that is common to all of us that we should all care about, it's <sighs> just the split second it can all go up in flames. Yeah, that's all it takes. That's the risk. That is the risk. And some of the devastating effects of nuclear weapons. If you happen to have your head pointed in the direction of the explosions, it renders you blind for a yes. few hours. The this is so interesting. Nuclear a nuclear weapons fireball is so hot it burns through everything as far as thirteen kilometers from the detonation site. Thirteen kilometers. Okay. Thermal radiation has a radius of thirteen kilometers. The total area that will be burned. Around 550 square kilometers. I mean, look what happened with Japan. We dropped, they, got a, they had a nuclear bomb dropped on them or atomic. And uh, it uh, not only did atomic. it- Atomic. Yeah, but it didn't stop them. They had to drop another one for them to stop. Because uh, <laughs> at, that time of, uh, at that time of the war, they were, they were crazy. <laughs> atomic versus nuclear weapon. Mm -hmm. There's a nice, oh, this. I gotta get like a physicist on here one day. Oh yeah, dude, that would be awesome. You would, I think you would actually not. <laughs> okay, look at this diagram. <laughs> look at this. So Hiroshima, oh, these thing kilotons. I don't have concepts for kilotons. Me neither. Nuclear, nuclear atomic bombs use mm -hmm. fission, the splitting of the, the, a large atom into two smaller ones. Mm -hmm. Thermonuclear hydrogen bombs more powerful hydrogen bombs use fusion, the fusing of two or more atoms. Isn't science wonderful? Because like, it looks really simple, right? <laughs> but uh, it's not that simple. <laughs> I mean, it is, but like, yeah. Oh, is a hydrogen bomb bit? No, no, it can't be. It's I mean, hydrogen bomb more maybe it dangerous. is, but maybe the, maybe the difference in damage is different. Anyway, let's keep talking about yeah, how yeah. nuclear weapons can destroy our entire existence. Uh, windows are gonna shatter uh, within 21 kilometers of the air blast. Can we just pause on 550 kilometers possibly being burned? That's like here to pasture long. It's like 
Great Ocean Road by- Bro, it's halfway to Sydney. It is. Is that the entire, I don't know. Imagine Holy all, shit, imagine all just of that all land. Victoria. Gone. And then, and that, yeah. And then that would just be an area of radiation. And like those areas wouldn't be safe until however long it takes for radiation to go away. <laughs> this is, so th- if you're wondering where this is from, um, this is from a great Kurtzgeist video mm-hmm. on YouTube. Uh, very well researched, you can see there. So you got a house, right? You like your house. You like how the building you're in right now, for those listening, is upright and it's not collapsed. It's a good thing. So if you are within 175 square kilometers, your house, they described, will collapse like a house of cards. It's yeah. just bye-bye. Just gone. So are you. Just because of all the pressure. Yes, sir. Now, in 2017, almost two thirds of all world's countries supported uh, the International Red Cross uh, movement to prohibit and eliminate nuclear weapons. But two thirds is still not all. Yes, there is. As much as people would like, yes, we've given away our nuclear weapons, there would be so much hidden because of fear. Because if something were to happen, they want to retaliate. Some people believe it's a deterrence that because two countries or a group of countries have nuclear weapons, it deters the others from using them because they know they have them. Yes, it's just like, hey, if I use one, then they could send a hundred back. But right. if I send a hundred, they're still going to send a hundred. Like, like, right. like who wins? Nobody wins. Exactly. It's just a stalemate of like, who's going to fire first. And so this, that psychological thing, yeah, some people believe is 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 an argument for knowing your opponents have them. But isn't it fucked that some people would be willing to press a button that would end millions of life of people they don't know? To me, that is just like, if someone can do that, that like doesn't destroy my belief in humans. It just makes me really fucking sad. (sighs) Well, nuclear wise, to my knowledge, it hasn't been done, right? But to smaller scales during wars, yeah, there's been versions of that. Like if someone sent a nuclear bomb to destroy all of my family, I wouldn't send one back. I'd just be sad. I'm not that sort of person, but mm. you know, a lot of countries are about protecting their own and only their own. Again, territorial chimps. Yes, there you go. I, it, it comes back to it. People, this is not an exaggeration. Okay, if we go back, like I want to go back to that diagram. It's a diagram of how we've millions of years ago, 20 million years, ch- chimpanzee, ch- human ancestor. Yeah, yeah. Right? I don't really like this diagram, but. Yeah, <laughs> it's confusing, eh? Pongo. Oh, it's showing our lineage to the gorilla. Oh, and how it connects to each thing. I see, I see. Okay. So, if I'm going to try to find another one. If we have evolved from chimps all these millions of years ago. Yes. And then hunter gatherers, and then but what happened in the last fifty years? I think we've last just, fifty think, to one hundred and fifty years. I would say that we're just developing more empathy and more intelligence, and the technological revolution is here. Oh, we're up to the stage now where sometimes you'd have to wait fifty years to one hundred years for each big technological advancement. It's happening every fucking month now. Right, every month we're making technological advancements. It is insane at the rate that we're. We're just moving forward. So it's exciting. It is. With that being said, you could argue a strong argument that our physiology, our genes have not adapted because it's such a short amount of time to this technological age of phones and social media and uh, Mm. the internet. And have you seen the kids that are being raised these days? Kids are being raised with the internet. I mean, I had the internet, but it was dial up. And most of the stuff I've read from books and stuff like, just, but, but like from pretty much birth, you have an iPad. It's like when kids want to know something, they can find it out. If they want to do something, they can do it. Like they, they have like, I feel like kids just think, I, think, I feel like kids are a lot more intelligent in their own ways these days because they just have so much knowledge just at their doorstep. Yeah. And that's a beautiful thing because we're doing it right now. But it also is a dangerous thing at the same time. Yes. Because it, it, it's like a tool that you're not prepared to use can corrupt you. Yes. Like I could teach you how to use a knife. You might stab someone or cook a great meal. 
I met a I met a kid the other day. I think she was like seven, six six years old. Yeah, and she was learning Korean because she wanted to, and she was going online and doing it. And she would already, she was already speaking like Korean fairly well. And her parents didn't even teach her. She just went and did it herself. Was she Korean? No, she's white. Whoa. But she just wanted to learn it. So she went and did it. Like She wanted to learn it. She had yeah. the, the aptitude and forethought to how, say, I want to learn Korean. How crazy is that? I bet the internet influenced that maybe. Yes, I think it did. She was like, I think she was influenced by a show she was watching and she was like, oh, this is really beautiful. I love this. I want to learn this. It's just crazy to me. Because at my age, if I was six and I was say into something like that and I want to learn it, there was no way possible for me to learn it. Mm. It was just impossible. But now the beautiful thing is, you want to learn an instrument for free? Look it up. Look it up. Music, language. Yeah. Duolingo, memorize. Awesome. Oh man, if I had that when I was younger. But God. you are you young right now. You still oh, young I'm, right I'm talking now. like I'm talking like during my years growing like from like six years old to like fifteen. <laughs> if I had that shit in between there, mm. like but would you use it? Would we use it? Or I would we be distracted by the amazement of the other shit that's going on? Like the fucking metaverse. <laughs> God damn, the metaverse? Like the like what we're looking at is a diagram yeah, yeah, yeah. of Here we go. Dryopithecus, Ramapithecus, Australopithecus, right? Going from quadruped 14.8 million years ago. To bipedal. To, yep, to bipedal, very good. Right, we keep going, Homo erectus, 1.8 million mm, years. I love the Homo erectus years. <laughs> it's my favorite year. <laughs> <laughs> Are you dumbass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then we keep going. Yeah, so this is, I don't like this diagram because it wasn't exactly linear like this, right? Yeah. With the, uh, multiple uh, sapiens, genuses of sapiens existed at the same time. Yeah, exactly. Wherever you were in the, in the world, like people were at their own different stages of evolution, wherever they were. Yeah, we're talking like, like I think six to 10 different um, genuses were existing at the same time, they think. Yeah. And then we get to modern man. So modern man is like, okay, 40,000 years to present, like you could say, Yeah. something like that maybe. But even like modern, modern man, like, what is that? Like the modern man now technological, who's like connected to computers. How old is that? Or new is that? When, uh, when people made the first computers. I mean, like with that when it would start? Because modern man, what is modern man? I think, what is modern man? Like when does modern man start? Why 40,000 years? I would believe modern man starts when you remember that graph you showed before that had those th the things. I feel like once, you had shelter, safety, mm. food. Oh, okay, Maslow. I feel like once you had all those things in the first two, mm -hmm. that's when modern man starts because you start thinking about the other things. That's where religion comes in. That's where money, money comes in. I sure. feel like that is the start of modern man to me. When you start valuing and realizing that you have the things that you need to survive, but as you know, as human, you crave more. Oh, here we go. And this is a nice description. Language, art, music, spirituality, dance, storytelling. Yeah. So even here is like 260 to 350,000 years ago. But look, regardless, we need to put it in the context yeah. of 10 plus million years of evolution was not evolved and adapted to what just ha what's happening in the last hundred years. Yeah. How does our chimp mind cope and deal with the insanity of what it is to be a human now? Because we haven't adapted to cars and driving and stress and, you know, I got bills and all these like yeah. culture. The world's moving too quickly for a lot of people. It shouldn't, it, by, it really shouldn't be moving that quickly. Right? Doesn't, we can't keep up mentally. But there are so many humans out there that have so much already in their pocket that they have so much time to just do more. And so that's why I think we're advancing so quickly. Oh, uh, okay. Because we've ticked the boxes of comfort, right? Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So what can happen now? Innovation. Innovation. People are comfortable. There's no, it hasn't been a war for, for a long time. A world war. A world war, yeah. Which has allowed peace and prosperity. And when people have peace and prosperity, they can solve like interesting problems, right? They have room to think. Mm. So then they make technology. Like we have amazing leaders and people come into power to create things like Amazon and drones. Yes. And a Tesla. Do you think there will be another world war at some stage? Yes. Or you do? Absolutely. You I think it's inevitable. 
I think it's inevitable. I do. I don't want there to be, but at the same time, wars and conflicts help create a reset. It's true. They say, I've heard that, I can't remember where this is from, but before the downfall and uh, like cataclysm of, of a civilization, they tend to get very obsessed about sex and gender mm-hmm. and sexuality which you could say is happening and been happening now. Mm. And I think happened similar way during the Roman times. Yes. If I recall correctly. Yeah. So maybe an indication of some sort. Roman times are so interesting because they still had like death on display, but they just were so open to just sex and, you know, not looking so perfect. Like, being beautiful in those times was having a bit of weight on you. By, by, by eating a lot of food was a way of being sexual. Oh, wealthy. You were wealthy. Yeah, wealthy and sexual. And I, I think there's a lot of healthiness to that. Well, now we know about modern medicine and science and that obesity, probably not a good idea. Not, oh, of course not. But like, but it was seen as like status, right? Yes. And, and class. And you had money obsession with... Full of civilization, obsession with sex. Like if you had an olive tree, your olive tree was a display of wealth. Really? Yes. If you had your own olive tree, it was a definitely a display of wealth. <sighs> All right, I can't find this. Um, <laughs> war. I uh, I do. Uh, I think fundamentally, humans are tribal and uh, conflict particularly among males, is fundamental yes. to what it is to be a human. And at this sheer scale of humans, the room for possibilities, countries and leaders and possible conflicts is almost endless. Hmm. What do you think? Do you- do you believe that you'll be completely off the grid a bit, but do you believe you'll be alive for us to meet other things other than humans? Like, do you believe that, that we'll become in contact with other life outside of outside of Earth in your life or in the next few thousand years? Well, those are two different questions. In my lifetime, in our lifetime, do I think we'll come, like, hmm. a life of this planet or life outside of this planet? Because um, we could find some things like, like deep both. in the sea. Or maybe maybe some aliens have already been here. Yeah, I, and we can't see them. I personally believe they have. Really? Yes, I believe in other life. I think it's stupid to believe that with a universe that expansive, that there is nothing else out there. That is, I don't know. But there's a lot of people that believe there isn't. But surely, it's. So ask me that question again. Is there? Do you believe that in your lifetime, or in this Earth's lifetime, or outside of it? that we'll get to a stage where humans will come into contact with other life. I don't know about my lifetime. In the next thousand years, as more time goes along, it becomes more and more probable. Mm. But why I believe that is because our technology gets better yeah. and the technology of other civilizations assumingly gets better. Exactly. Like maybe we'll find another, we'll find them before they find us. Here's the thing though. Oh, it's a fascinating conversation. Yes. If we find one, it can be like a, if you see one, what do you do? Do you send a signal out? And do they send one back? Do they understand the signal? Does the signal seem threatening to them? Do they come back? Yeah, and if it does, do they come back with disproportionate force because they'd rather eliminate a potential threat than than risk being overwhelmed themselves. Exactly. It's such a weird thing because everything that you're doing to try and reach out to them, they might not understand or they might think the complete opposite of what it actually means because you don't know what technology, like a lot of their technology be 100% of it, maybe from different resources from where they're from, which we'll have no understanding of because the more that we're going to other planets and checking out rocks and stuff, we're like, we're, we're you know, we're learning new metals. We're learning new, like, like we're going to eventually just figure out more elements and stuff. Like the earth only contains a certain amount. The more that we expand, the more that we're going to realize. Mm. Like that's why a lot of people don't think space travel is, we can't do it right now because we just haven't discovered 
any resources that can help format that. Well, Elon's working on it. He's working on it. He uh, One of his problems that he articulated in his recent podcast with Lex Freedom, who I highly recommend watching, is how expensive it is. Uh, I think he said $1 million per ton, I think, to, uh, to go to Mars, yeah. um, which is just hugely expensive. He's trying to put uh, people go to Mars within five to ten years. Mm-hmm. He's working on a reusable rocket, which is like gets caught by like these arms. Yeah, which is awesome. That is really fucking cool. Uh, and p- he actually talked about the over. He, did, he he actually thinks the opposite to what you think about overpopulation. He thinks we don't have enough people. Wow, which is really interesting, right? Yeah. So like, why would that be? Well, if I remember correctly, his contention was. We, we need more people to solve and help solve these problems. We need more engineers. We need more thinkers. We need more problem solvers to move us faster in the direction of progress. Mm, so he believes that by having more, more children, there is a higher chance of more of those people wanting to do the things that needs to be done. Right. Because as much as I want to be someone to help with this, I'm a creative and that's with my... That's where my life lies. What's a creative got to do with it? Oh, it's just like- Oh, just because it's not like- It's just not the way I think. You're not trying to solve some complex scientific problem. Exactly. Like as much as I'd like to do that, a part of it, it's just not where my ideals lie and it's just not where my intelligence lies effectively, I feel. And that's that's the beautiful thing about being a person. It's like you, you find your own- You find your own thing. Yeah. Um, all right. So he did an interview- so he thinks one of the biggest threats to civilization is uh, birth rate slowing down. Get out of here, pop-ups. I mean, I, think, I, I can see his argument because- Let's quote it. I think one of the biggest risks to civilization is low birth rate and the rapidly declining birth rate. Uh, and yet so many people, including smart people, think that there are too many people in the world and think that the population is growing out of control. It's completely opposite. Please look at the numbers. If people don't have more children, civilization's going to crumble. He says, mark my words. It's very, uh, oh, damn it. It's not the full quote. These bastards. <laughs> These bastards. No, but I, I can see where he's coming from because say with global warming, uh, with maybe war being inevitable, like there's a lot of things happening and it's true because of the, the boom that happened, we shut up so much, but with the, with the fertility decline, eventually it's going to go down a bit. And maybe because it's going to start going down, human humanity is still going to be thinking in the same rate that we've been thinking about before while we were climbing. And we're waiting for the next generation of children. And maybe when we get to that stage, it'll be too late because maybe the technological advance we went to be made, we would have made them if we had more people. So I can I can see the arguments he's making. Okay. But that doesn't necessarily count out, count out that we can do it. You're betting on future humans, right? Yeah, I'm betting on... Because I, I feel like when push comes to shove with humanity... We're the kind of race that like, if we need to get something done, we'll do it. People, when people realize, cause obviously we're realizing a lot of shit's going to hell now, but when we're really faced with it in a more extreme matter, I feel like humans will be like, all right. And then a lot of people will, be, will go and do the shit they got to do in order to get it done. Even so, if they don't want to do. Yeah. For a common enemy, like if an like if a, if a alien threat came to us, like would we all band together like Independence Day? Yes, I believe we would. Right. I believe a lot of people that would have no military understanding or scientific understanding would get into those, get into that field, and a lot of people would excel in those fields, but they never would have got there without that threat. It's like uh, when nine eleven happened. Uh, I hear stories about what happened to New York and how that city had never felt so connected and as one and together and kind and helpful than that time. Yeah, it's, it's fucked up. Violence and death brings people together and mm. helps reshape the way the future is. Yeah, yeah, well said. Yep. So as we become more people or smarter people as well to help solve problems of resource allocation, resource management, more economical, efficient ways to uh, use renewable resources, um, And then aliens. And then aliens. But yeah, it's a, it's such a weird one because maybe we meet aliens and they have the same resources as us. They have the same languages as us. They we find ways to communicate with. Them. We find ways to work with them. Or maybe we just don't understand anything about each other and we are fearful of each other. Right. Have you heard of the? 
a Kardashev scale? No, I have not. The Kardashev scale. It's a theory about. I just pulled up a research paper that's just. We're not <laughs> that's a lot. That's heavy. Okay. How much information you want? Jesus. A lot. Um, this is actually in my same document about arguments for and against. Are there aliens, right? Yeah. Could there be aliens? I love how you have all these documents on deck. We're into the same shit. It's I lit. love learning, man. So do I, bro. And books. Yes, dude. I was reading one on my way here. Really? What were you reading? It was a fantasy novel, but you know what? It's the same, <laughs> it's the same shit. Nonfiction books don't pull you in the same way. I know they don't pull you in the same way, but do you read them often or at all? Uh, I do sometimes, but I have to be really interested in it. Like say right now, if there was a book that someone told me was about stuff that we're talking about now, hell yeah, I would read the fuck out of that. What about, what's his name? Neil deGrasse Tyson. I haven't read anything from Neil deGrasse Tyson. Have you seen any of his videos? Yes, I've watched a lot of his videos. He's a very entertaining, good speaker. He's a very well-spoken man. And I imagine his books communicate in that similar engaging way. I wonder if that would be a book that would really capture you on those topics. I hope so. I just know that when I read... As much as I like to hear about stuff that already exists, I love things that don't exist. Just the idea of reading something of something that's just so out there and just, it has the potential to be real, but we made it up. Like that's just, when I, I read to escape, you know? Okay, that's I like, different. I create, I, I escape to a world where I just know none of it's real. And it's, it's, it's a nice escape for me. If you read to escape, then reading nonfiction isn't so much escape. It's- often education and learning and yeah it's more just to satiate my knowledge craving have you do you read what about biographies yes i read frank sinatra's biography which is yeah. really good fucking very interesting man what about uh, what did you learn about him what was it what was he like i learned he was a huge part of the sicilian mob okay so a lot of a lot of his fame comes to well actually not just him but a lot of musicians in that time you could only really make it if you're a part of some gangs of like like a lot of the gangs we're in control of the music. Like you'd go to this venue, you'd be like, hey, can I work at this venue tonight? And they'd be like, or you'd be like, can I, can I use the singer tonight? And they'll be like, what's in it for us? Or like, if you were, if, you, if your singer was getting a certain popularity above another one, like, like it's a lot of singers in the times of the, world, of the first world war and before it, a lot of art and music was in control of people with money, power and violence. And it's also very similar today, not to the same degree, but there's a lot of musicians out there today where their power comes from money and violence. We just don't see and hear about it. It's very much. interesting because like art and music can shape culture, which can then shape opinions of people, which can then shape like a population and a culture, mm. the art and music. like how. Mm. And just like any man, he had his addictions. He had a lot of, he had, I think three marriages, had a lot of, I guess, marriage troubles, mm. you know, he, yeah, he's just like any other man. Wasn't perfect, wasn't the best person, but still- was an amazing singer and, you know, you could hear it. You like Will Smith. I love Will Smith. I love Will Smith. I watch all this shit. She def I reckon the book, his biography, I'm still reading. It's a long one. Yeah. But I've never had a book that has captured me like, like that. That's made me laugh, cry, smile, and just the wave of emotions. And it just- it makes me want to keep reading. It's very like, I don't know how mm. books that make me want to keep reading very often. No, I want to, I definitely want to read this because I watched all of the, the shorts in his YouTube, which led up to the book yeah. and all the little talks with his family oh. and friends, bro, just no matter who he talks to, he makes, like you said, they cry, they laugh and they just be like, look, I already knew you were a flawed human and you don't show it that much. But I feel like this is kind of not the first, but this is a big part in Will Smith's life where he's showing the flaws more on front. Absolutely, because he's he hid them a lot in the past. Yeah, he did. It, he admits that like it's a Will Smith is like a character. Yeah. Like, what? It's like this ain't the real Will. He made it, he made this character up, like Will Smith up to to like protect himself. Yeah. And I'm like, this guy that I that I admire and revere is just a character. Yeah. It's like whoa. And then I'm like, are we all just characters that yeah. we make up? I can relate to that a lot. I would, I would actually say that from the age of probably nine to 19, I was probably a character. Who were you trying to be? Whoever people needed me to be. Right. Throughout all primary and high school, I definitely forced myself not to be myself in order to survive yeah. and fit in. Wow. It wasn't until I moved to Melbourne that I started to actually 
be myself because I felt safe. I, I feel like I could safely do so. If It's so interesting you say that because I see you as a guy who is so yourself and so inspiring. Like, like you... You're so you. Like I'm me. You f- no, that's such a weird thing to say. But like, y- you feel authentic. I don't feel like you're trying to be someone else. No. I've never felt that about you. I've always felt like there's no. I don't see a mask. I see, and that's just. It's very. Uh, it helps you connect. It does. It helps me connect, and I think it probably helps other people connect with you. He's definitely. But the nine to eighteen, you said. Yeah, like I still connected with people, and I still got on with people. But a lot of it was just formed in a way for me to fit in. Because mm. a lot of a lot of my youth was kind of like, if I didn't, because I, I didn't have many, I didn't have any friends, I didn't have anyone that had the same interests as me. So I had to legitimately be like, these people, if I'm with them, I won't get bullied by these people. And I'm kind. I'm not interested in these things, but I, I'm pretty good at these things, so I can do these things with them in order to like. So that's kind of how school was for me. You adapted so you could fit in. I adapted so I could fit in, so I, that I wouldn't get teased, bullied, yeah. beaten the fuck up. Yeah, that happened. No, I avoided it by 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 right. making those decisions. Okay. So I, I'm trying to think if Will did things similar. Like he, he did. He was like, "Hey, if I do this and this and this and put on this, then it'll work." And it worked for me. It worked for him. He talks about in his book um, when his father hit his mom, um, he's always identified as the coward. Mm. Like he was the oldest, but he identified as the coward originally because he didn't do anything to help protect his mom. Yeah. His brother became the fighter, younger brother. Yeah. His sister became, she, she like hid, she got quiet, right? They all responded to this trauma and threat differently. Mm. And that affected how he, his relationships with women because he'd always try and he'd always try and please them and make sure he was, you know, he would go ob- above and beyond too much, right, to, to please them and placate them. But when he became a musician and then an actor, after all these years of playing the character, he knew how to do that. He'd been doing it his whole life of just trying to fit in and please always please his father. It came from that. It's like always trying to like, you know, please his father, make people laugh. That's why he became the, the funny guy. Yeah. Because if he made people laugh, he could feel in control. Yeah, that's why I do it. Really? Yeah. Because my whole thing was just like, I was, I, was a, I was a goofball. I was like, I didn't give a fuck what people thought about me. I was an asshole. I was a smart ass. But if I made people laugh, that was a control of sorts. And you feel safe. I just felt, I just, it just, it just gave me something to live for. Wow. You resonate then. Yeah, I, I'll resonate heavily. You definitely got to get it then, man. Definitely. I also love the last few videos of his father before he died. Yeah. They're powerful. Like you can see him in tears being like, I'm not a perfect man. I fucked up a lot of things. Mm. But you could just see how thankful he was for a lot of things. He was a tough man. Yeah, very disciplined, very tough military guy. Um, and and that instilled fear in Will as he grew up. And so Will would use humor to survive. And like, as if you could make people laugh, everybody's having a good time. Yeah. Right? And so he kept doing that over and over. That became him. And so when he started to do movies, it's like, oh, I got this. I know how to play. I know how to be someone else. I know how to put it on an act. <sighs> yeah. It's inspiring. No, it's exciting. No, no, you made me definitely want to read this. I mean, I already wanted to because I'd watched everything leading up to it, but it's cool. <laughs> well, you got focused. You're focused. But exactly. I'm focused. I got I gotta, I gotta a goal right now. And until that goal is done, I'm not putting much effort into much else. What's the goal? It's to finish the course. To finish the course. Man, it's, how long has it been? One thing at a time. It's been fucking it's been hard. like a year. It's been so fucking hard. Really? Yeah. Just tell, for those still listening, what, what uh, music industry course? Yeah, it's right? music industry course. So it covers all aspects of the music inter- industry so that you can choose a path to go in. Okay. So this, is, this is at the very, I just need to clarify. It's at the very prestigious Abbey Road, which is a very, very um, well respected college studio. Yeah, I'd say so. Go on. 
Oh, so pretty much I've already learned a lot of different music soft, like a lot of doors. I've learned a lot to do with learning microphones to sound, how it works, how to how to connect everything correctly. But right now my subjects, because it's different subjects every trimester. So right now my subjects are business. So understanding if you were to promote yourself or promote someone else or promote something to do with either of those, how to do it and not get fucked over and to do it well. Because you, in order to market yourself or someone else, you have to know or else people aren't going to be interested. Yeah. And so, and also copyright. So business, I think it's boring as fuck. I hate it. I'm behind, but it's something I got to do. Well, because like you might make a fucking masterpiece. You might make my beautiful dark test fantasy. Yeah. But if no one hears that shit, what are we doing? Yeah. You might paint Picasso, <laughs> but if no one sees it, man. Oh yeah. I've no been, one knows. I've also been drawing a lot lately because, oh, yeah? well, yeah, because this, this year of music is probably the least amount of music I've listened to in the past like 10, 20 years. Because? Because I'm studying it now. And when I get home after eight hours of studying music, I don't want to listen to it. Yeah. <laughs> There's, it's, it's, it's a hobby of mine and I want to, I want to lose that as well. So I've been drawing a lot more. It's like another outlet. What do you draw? Fucking demons and fucking random shit. Whatever. Pretty much, I don't have an idea. Whatever I see in my head, I just draw it. Do you post it? I want to say this. Yeah, it's all on my Instagram. Is right? it? You can you can see all my shit on Instagram. <laughs> but yeah, it's like a new outlet that I've really enjoyed doing. Now, for those who don't know, for our people from Jungle Beats listening... I was me at the beach yesterday when I got burnt. Look at you, you look like a goddamn model. Hell yeah, bro. Your pink ass hair. I fucking, I fucking do it for the camera. It's stayed gray. It's me. That's cool. That's cool neon lighting. Yeah, that was that was fun. All right, so here we go. We got man. So whatever I see in my head, I just draw. So Describe this. So this was meant to be a grasshopper, but it turned into kind of a stick insect praying mantis spider. But grasshoppers have. They have three eyes. They have their compound eyes, mm. which are the ones with the lots of things. And then they have two eyes above the antenna. And then they have one eye in the middle of their compact eyes. So as you can see, it's like, and I just gave him some teeth, some wings and shit. And then I just drew a fucking fly with fucking maggot guts and tentacles kind of dropping from him. And there's a weird ass mosquito here and a tree. And then there's just flies buzzing and everything. I don't know. It's just what I saw in my head. So I drew it and I felt better afterwards. You did? Yeah. Are you high when you're doing this or is this sober? Nah, sober. What's this thing? Oh, it's just an, a little fucking orc I drew. It's like a... a little demon orc. Looks like a man in black. <laughs> a little man in black character. I was just like another alien I was drawing. See, it's just, just stuff I draw. And I, I drew this one yesterday. Oh no, sorry, the day before yesterday. What is that? Exactly. So there's like a giant fucking evil fucking guy smiling at the top and then there's this demon. And there's oh, like a... damn. Big thing of energy. Then there's like a, a genie lamp on fucking legs with a monster coming out of it, licking the blood this guy's dropping from his fingers. Like, I can't I can't explain to you what this means. I just see this shit and I draw it. These are, you can draw a little bit. A I little didn't know bit, you yeah. had this skill. A little bit. <laughs> oh my God, there's more. There's so many more. Oh shit. Oh, dude. Oh, yeah, that's if my, you ever got tattoos, you could definitely draw your own. Oh yeah, for sure. That's a mandrake I drew. That is cool, man. So yeah, it's just like another another creative outlet. How long does it take you to draw these? Uh, like three to four hours. Really? Yeah, because I have to take breaks because I'm I'm not focused enough to keep doing something for a long period of time. Hmm. There but, you uh, go, son. Yeah, it's pretty fun. And then uh, I guess also with school, there's uh, the I'm learning the live sound aspects of things. So if you with gigs how to set up the fucking, all the sound correctly. And while a gig's going on, how to make sure that sound's staying the sound. And if you're, if you're working with artists, every artist or band is going to want a different way of, the, of things to sound. So you have to figure that out and do it for them. Mm. Even if it doesn't sound right to you, do what they want. Right. And understanding the frequencies of which where sound sits and how to control that to achieve what they want. Based on the type of room? based on the type of room, the acoustics of the room, based on the type of desired sound they want, uh, the type of instruments they have, the type of equipment you have. It's very complex. It's very, very complex. And I still have not figured it out. But you're figuring it but out. But I'm figuring it out. You're putting pieces <laughs> together. Is this all the stuff that E did? Yeah, did he this know all, all the stuff? stuff? E knows all this stuff, wow. presumably. Do you talk to him about it? Yeah, I do. I haven't talked to him for a while. I mean, we did We did say we were going to catch up recently, but... uh. He would be, uh, for those who don't know, Eliferios is- Homie. 
he's a I can't say this properly because I don't know all the producers in Melbourne. I just think he's an amazing producer. I'm going to call him one of the best producers in Melbourne, right? Yeah. Like, I'm very biased, but like <laughs> the work he's done with Ali and like uh, Ali Belmont, um, look him up on Spotify, like just an amazing artist and behind E's production, which is just, they worked so so well together and um, E doing his own thing now. And uh yeah, I definitely recommend Ali Belmont and then you'll find Eleferius from it because I know people can't spell that one. Yeah, he's a very talented individual. Absolutely. And just a beautiful man. Absolutely. I love you. Yeah, if you're listening right now, you, know, <laughs> you want to come on, chimps? Come on. Um, but all right, keep, keep talking. Like, right. it, how long has it been? You've been away in Sydney for like, is it been a year? Nine, nine months now. Man, that's crazy. And I gotta, I'll be there. I'll finish my course probably July next year. Oh, wow. And then I'll probably stay a bit longer because- I don't know I'm kind of enjoying some of the new connections I'm making there. Yeah. Um. And and also if I'm make, I'm meeting a lot of people in the industry there. So if I can get a way into the industry, and stay there, I will. I I do want to come back here, but at the same time, I know the people here are always going to be here. So I'm just I'm just fucking riding the journey. Yeah, man. Who knows? Is there any opportunities that are on on the horizon that could come out of this? Um. Or, or, yeah. I'm sorry. Definitely, definitely. But I do think I need to just keep working hard yeah. because a lot of the students that I'm studying with, they've been they've been playing and doing music since they were born. They've just been in families, which they're just constantly around it. I didn't fucking start doing this shit until a few years ago. So Fuck it, man. So, oh yeah, don't worry. That doesn't hold me back. Yeah, it just means I got to work harder. Just go, man. And, and you're going to be surrounded by those people, which is great because they can help elevate you. Exactly. And teach you things quicker. Exactly. And a lot of them are really good. Like a lot of the people that I surround myself around, like, hey, if you want to help with anything, just call. That's I'll great. help you with it. That's so great. it's good. But not everyone's like that, unfortunately, because it's Sydney. Like there are a few students or teachers that will try to bring me down and it never gets me down. Really? Yeah. Teachers? What are they trying to bring you down? They just they just uh they just don't get me. They just they think that I'm not being serious. So they think that I'm not they think that I won't take things seriously or that I'm not mm. trying hard enough or they don't get an understanding for it. I guess they just don't realize that one, I'm a slow learner because I can't do multiple things at a time. So like, it takes me a lot longer to get shit. And two, I just like fucking joking about shit. I like having a laugh. And a lot of people in Sydney just don't have that mentality. They're just like, no, no, no. If you're going to do this, you have to be professional. You have to be focused. In all of my, in all of my reports and in all of my exams, the feedback is like, Dade's creative outlet and display and all this is, is really good, but he lacks professionalism. In every single one of them. <sighs> Look, <laughs> professionalism has its place. Yeah. You want to work in an office. You want to work for corporations. You want to like, I don't know, like maybe you want to go work for actually Abbey Road in London, right? You Maybe you'll need, you probably need a level of professionalism to hang around those types of people. I know I don't need it, bro. I'm doing shit my way. I think you're going in a different direction. You can be successful in other ways. That's it. That's what I told one of my teachers. Just, I'm just like, look, you come from a background where that's how you grew up. Yeah. People, Respect. if you did something wrong, people would beat the shit out of you. You said that? <laughs> yeah, I'd one of my teachers be like, if if like if I did something out of place, people would hit me. And, he, oh, and he sometimes said that. and he'd be like, That's just how it was. And, mm. and he still has a mentality. I'm like, look, I'm sorry that you went through that. I don't think that was right, but like I'm a I'm a constantly be myself. And if you don't think that's professional, you don't vibe with it, that's you. I'm not gonna change that for you. I can still achieve my goals and get to where I want to be with being myself and still getting shit done. Yeah. I ain't I, I ain't gotta be professional in the way that you deem professional. My professionalism is just being a good fucking human. Mm, that's that's number one. That, exactly. That's that that's all professionalism is to me. Just be a good fucking person. And also you can be a dickhead, just don't just choose the right moments to be a dickhead. I don't know. If you if you're just being humorous and like funny and you're like cracking jokes or maybe being inappropriate at times, like what what type of professionalism do they want? They just want like a yes man, just like yes sir, no sir, three bags full sir. I think so. I think a lot of Very the people proper. I think a lot of the people at the school that I study at, they're amazing people and they've taught me lots, mm. but they just don't understand that a lot of being human is just having that side of things. Like there was a kid that came in that was 19 years old or 18, amazing drummer, can sing while drumming, super talented dude. But the whole, and the whole time he was just like mucking around and having fun and making jokes. And the whole time all the teachers were saying is like, man, this kid's got it. 
but he needs to lose this personality. Ugh, they didn't even say personality. They did. They're really? like, he, they're like he, that he has to lose this wow. in order to gain professionalism. And all, I didn't say it out loud, but all I could think was, this is the thing about this kid that is the most interesting yeah, thing about him. This him is unique. This is what breathes. This is what you want to bring out more. And you want to get rid of that? Wow. And that's what, and then that moment I realized like, I'm learning a lot here, but these aren't my people. Yeah. But but you can meet people like that, like that drummer guy. Exactly, I like got it. I'm on Instagram with him. Yeah, sweet. He's talented as fuck. Hold on, I can shout him out. Yeah, shout him out. Let me, let me find him. Let's give him. Let's give he's him gonna. Some he's gonna be. He's gonna be so fucking. He's gonna. He's got a good career ahead of him, man. So yeah, that's the thing, man. It's the thing that makes people different and separates them. Yeah, man. You you don't want to suffocate what makes people different. There you go, River oh. River Langford. Oh, that's the homie. Yeah, dude, you came in. I'm just recording some stuff. And honestly, man, fuck what people say. Like, you keep doing you. Fuck people telling you to grow up, to be more professional. Keep fucking doing you. You're 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 an amazing human being. You're so you're exceptional. Yeah, look at him. Oh yeah, this is when I was recording. Yeah, I recorded him do this shit. <laughs> Is there See? any of him? He plays piano too. Yeah, I think he plays guitar too, man. He's very talented, and he's young as fuck, and he can sing. I want to hear him sing. B major seventh. I love the piano. Same, man. I'm trying to get better at it. You play? I'm trying to. I mean, I can play. If you told me to play something now, I'd just play shit, and it would sound good. But I don't have the exact knowledge to understand what I'm playing. Do you know how to read music? Not very well. I'm trying to I'm trying to learn. A lot of the like pretty much everyone in my class can read music but me. Did they teach you it? They did, but I still don't fully understand it. But because but because the teachers are like so they they've pretty much been taught it since they were like 4 years old. They just go through it so quickly that I just don't have time to capture everything. So I just basically will pinpoint certain things and if that's enough for me to grasp a, a little understanding of it, it's good enough for me to move on to the next thing. Right. I'm getting there, bro. <laughs> you feel like you're getting better every day, every week? Or do you feel like some weeks are stagnant, some weeks are not? No, I do feel like I'm getting better. I, I do think that I could push myself harder, but I also do believe that I do need that time to myself. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a tricky one. Like, like say at the end of this year, I'm not upset at myself, but I'm definitely wishing I could have done more. But at the same time, I'm still learning a lot and doing well. Well, look, you can use those lessons and energy to come into the uh, the last half of your course to do like that. That's that's pretty much it. So what do you what, what do you kind of regret? What do you wish you, you did a little bit better that you can do in a couple months now? Just some of my spare time. I just wish some of the days where I wasn't feeling a hundred percent, even if I just put in like an extra bit of hours work to do some shit, that probably would have helped me a lot. There's something called the two minute rule um, from a great book I'm summarizing called Atomic Habits. Because mm. like you feel overwhelmed by the amount of shit you have to do. I've done this. What is it? What have you done? So pretty much if I'm if I'm so uninspired and I just don't want to do anything, mm -hmm. but I know that making a song would help me, mm. then I'll be like, all right, I'm just gonna put on a five minute timer yeah. and I'm gonna start making a beat. Yep. And normally what happens is I'll start making it and next thing you know, an hour's passed and I got a beat. Yeah. And it's like that probably 80% of the time. Sometimes it'll be 15 minutes and even I'm coming up with oh, shit. That's cool. Sometimes I'm not in the zone, but most of the time it pays off. So I've, I've done that. That's it, man. And you give yourself the option to fin if if you want to finish in two minutes or five minutes, you're gonna be done. Oh, bro, I last ages. You can. <laughs> hey, 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 how you doing? <laughs> you can stop after two minutes if you're not feeling it. You give yourself that option. Yeah, but you can get in a groove. You keep going. Exactly. But just two minutes, five minutes. So I have started doing this in, awesome. the, in the last trimester, and it's been helping a lot. Dang. But there are days where. I'm so overwhelmed with the amount of information. Like I have naps every day, bro. Yeah. <laughs> because knowledge is hungry work. It's real. No, it's no, no, real. This is real. Um, our brain is the thirstiest organ. It yeah. uses the most amount of calories mm. and energy. And we've seen that uh, chess players during hard chess masses, chess masses, chess masses, chess matches. You got it. Can <laughs> expend thousands. Oh, actually, that study's not true. Lots of calories though. You expend more energy when you're thinking. Yes, you do. <laughs> and when you're cognitively uh, have demands on it and memory retention 
and consolidation predominantly occurs during sleep. Mm-hmm. You want to remember the shit that you learned? You absolutely need to sleep eight to nine hours mm-hmm. over 24 hours. So you could nap for two hours and sleep for seven hours. That's what, oh, two hour nap, that's dangerous, bro. My naps are 30 minutes to 45 minutes. Yeah, Any more than that yeah. and I'm groggy. Yeah, yeah. you got to be careful because <laughs> you don't understand sleep cycles. The average sleep cycle is 90 minutes. So that's why people say, Stay in stage one or two before you get to deep sleep. That's why that 30 minutes works for you. Yeah. Or go all the way to 90 to 120 minutes and, and you have one full cycle and you should feel well rested. If you don't, then you were coming out of it in deep sleep instead of light sleep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's always interesting to me like, because sometimes I'll wake up and you, you just don't feel like you got that deep sleep. If you're waking up groggy, maybe from an alarm, you're probably being woken up, woken up out of your deeper stages. Mm. That's why- if you can help it, don't set an alarm or try and time it. Like, oh, oh, so you can understand the way your body works. You'd be mm-hmm. like, oh, cool. I know that I'm getting, I wake up at this time. And so you just kind of learn your body and mm-hmm. learning when's the best time for you to wake up and go to bed. And that's understanding that the average sleep cycle is 90 minutes. Divide that by however many hours you're in bed or yeah. want to be in bed. Yeah. I think I've gone to the stage where pretty much, I think seven six to seven hours of sleep is pretty much what I'm getting most days. Cool. And I feel like if I sleep nine or eight to nine, I still feel fine, but I might have a bit of a light headache, but like seven hours is like, I feel I wake up feeling pretty good. Okay then. Keep it rolling, man. Keep it rolling. But yeah, I'm still, I'm still figuring that shit out. Yeah. It's been, you nearly done. You got, Great connections with people that you're making. Yes. And that just, the, 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 yeah. I mean, like, well, if you come out to be a, pre- the, the, here's the thing. There's so many different types of people in the industry yeah. that are so different. I think greatest examples of like modern musicians and artists that are also different. Why do you have to be this professional guy or girl? Mm. Why, why can't you have your own flair that makes you different and unique? Like everybody from Kanye West to, um, T- Toby Nigwe, right? Oh, bro, Toby Nigwe is no Nigwe. Thank you. Um, like, look what he's done in such a short span of time. Oh my goodness! Oh man, him and his family, and every he always is so thankful for those around him, and yeah. he really puts on for not only his people but where he came from. It's, dude, he is such an inspiration. I love Toby Nigwe. And here's the thing: he started like seven, eight years ago doing. Eric Thomas kind of put him on the map. If you remember him, the motivational speaker. Yes. And then just a couple of years ago, I think Beyonce gave him a shout out and they just- They've pop. just been rolling with it. They've been rolling with it. I love Fi Fi. Um, Fi Fi is good. Fi Fi. So it's, it's T-O-B-E-N-W-I-G-W-E. Toby Nwigwe. Yeah. We gon' Fi Fi. This was, this was dope. He, this is the live- to, uh, snippet from a movie he's uh, unique listen in the fella dude imagine being there oh my god! I want to see him live so bad it's a shout to Nell with the fucking production she kills it look at the dancing the set and he is making dog I'm a priest father figure look at them is a stage full oh, oh my goodness See, not only is he just like helping, look how much he's enjoying himself, but all the people on that stage, he's helping them have their own careers as well. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's when you, he's helping others as much as helping as himself. If you make it, you bring everybody with you. You see, if you win, we win. Yeah, exactly. That's the very same mentality because he would have had as much help as well. Yeah, of course. Like Definitely. you talk about the Arnold Schwarzenegger thing of like doing it alone. Also, I feel bad saying his name all the time because I feel like I'm dropping the ball. <laughs> I know, I know I'm not, but like- <laughs> Because it's so I, close? It's so damn close. <laughs> I didn't even think about it. I think Sch- Schwarzenegger, like that- See, it's very close. That, that's almost, that's a couple of syllables away. <laughs> it truly is. Schwarzenegger, Nwigwe. Nah, Nwigwe- Nah, just, Nwigwe is fine. That just rolls off the tongue. Um, it's yeah. a really good name. He's awesome. Highly recommend. Shout out. I'd love Shout to speak to him. him. Did I? No. Um, yeah. Just don't, man. Wait, tell us about what you've been doing this year, man. What do you What have you been achieving? What have I been achieving? What have you been achieving? Um, well, to keep it simple, what are three things from this year that are 
would be the most memorable to you or just the things that you are most proud of for yourself? Proud. I don't really think about being proud. Hmm. I don't really, it might sound weird. I don't really care about being proud of myself. It's not weird. Um, I don't really know what it feels like. I can't remember being proud of myself. Like people say, like, I'm really proud of myself. You should, I say to people, you should be proud of yourself for that. But like, hmm, pride. Pride is the devil. <laughs> Think he's gonna hold on me. Ooh. J. J. Cole. Um, but I'm the same. Like as much as people are the same to me, like I'll do the same. I'll say it to people. I'm, I'm the exact same. I yeah. don't think I'm never proud of myself because I would just have such a high expectation for myself. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Well, what was your question? Just things that you've done this year that you're- You said proud of. Well, if, if, if you're not proud, things you've done this year that you wanted to do and you fucking did it. Hmm. 2021, man. About this, this, is, this is New Year's Eve day. Yeah, man. It's New Year's. Right. So it's, I'll see you next year. <laughs> <laughs> Those fucking jokes, bro. Uh, I, say, I, I don't say it as a joke. I mean, it really, I like saying, cause it's like, oh wow. Next year is tomorrow. Next year is tomorrow. But it, does it matter? No. Like it's another day. It's another mother. This calendar day. was made up. It's just for a way for us, for us to just have, to have to, for time to make sense. Yeah, some people don't even believe in this calendar. Yeah, there's probably other ways that we could we could calendar the way things work and it would just be pretty much the same. Actually, Kurtz guys have this calendar they sell, which is like the, it's a different calendar instead of, because it's biblical. It's like a Gregorian calendar has to do with religion, yeah. Christianity, uh, BC, AD. Whereas some people believe the actual year should be like, no, it's actually 12,000. It's 12,000 um, and, and 20, 21. Or 22. Damn, we'd be younger as fuck. <laughs> we'd be younger? Wouldn't we tw- just say 12,000 days in a year? Oh, no. No, the year. Year 12,000. The days would be the same. Okay, okay, okay. As far as I understand. Um, Anyways, back to you, bro. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, look we sold <laughs> uh, We sold Orphic. That was, I don't feel proud to do that. But look, building a business with people, going to war, building it, making it into the biggest, best thing you can and then selling it for um, a, a good value and to great people who now is going to do something bigger and better with it is, I don't know. I'm still decompressing from it. Yeah, because that was only recently. You did a you did a podcast about it a few yeah. days ago. Yeah, yeah, with uh, Alex and Matt. And we, we, uh, we talked about that in depth there. Yeah. And that process. And, and that's something that we, our goal was always to sell it but they wouldn't ex- didn't expect it to be this soon. But an opportunity came up, just like serendipity, and like you know, uh, the, the other guys wanted out eventually, and um, we 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 put it out there and got back a good number and talked and negotiated and we came to it and uh, that that's one thing. Lessons and realizations about connections i'm about to do my yearly review so i'll get to really think about and solidify this but realizing how important relationships and people are in my life and that i actually no i, I used to be like oh, i like being alone and I, yeah i think we connected on that yeah you know but as i grow older i realize oh i love people i used to say i hate people on this on this really just this negative just pessimistic cynical shit Right, just like falling into this like social norm trap of cynicism. I'm on the opposite now. I know people are the best. They can. The line between good and evil runs between every human heart. Yeah, Alexander Schultznitzen. Right, but my people, my friends, my circle, my connections, the people I speak to, you, it's just net positive. I want more of that. Mm. So this year has been like a year of like connection and experiencing, uh, growing my relationships and having more meaningful relationships. And because if, if you surround yourself with more successful people, more better people, you rise up with them. Hard agree. That's a, a thing I really, really believe in. Also just surrounding yourself around people with things that you also believe in or are interested in yourself. Cause normally when they're doing shit, you, it just kind of makes you want to do it even more. Mm-hmm. 
I know surrounding myself around musicians makes me want to make more music. Right. If I surrounded myself around people that just didn't do anything, I probably wouldn't do as much. Right. And if those people were like, yeah, you got to be very careful of your environment. Yeah, definitely. You know, one of the best relationships is with is with Ben Can. Like he he has like this year we have I've learned so much from him, and we have done quite a bit of things together, and we plan to do you know uh, some big things next year. Uh, Tomorrow. <laughs> Tomorrow. <laughs> Tomorrow and beyond. Oh, oh, oh. With education in this uh, in this space, in this in this health space and um <sighs> hmm. I gotta really reflect. I gotta I, I, I need to decompress this year and do my yearly review. Well, yeah, yeah, you ain't you ain't gotta answer this now, but like it seems like you still you yeah, you're still in the decompression stages. Yeah, because I got a lot of space now. I got more time now than ever and I got I'm comf- I'm more comfortable. Uh strength of side is back, you know. Yeah, it's baby. Been, it's been nearly a year of that and that's been very uh, I've just been trying to be very consistent with my own health and training, but then with that business. And growing that and what I know it can be. Mm. Yeah, strength of side is a. It seems like not only is it about that, but maybe you'll just have a day where you'll just really resonate with something, and then you'll just put that on the page as well. Which is something that you just be like, I, I want people to know this or to hear this, like something different. Yeah. Well, that's what I wanted to turn it into. Yeah. I, originally, like you know, when you maybe you're a type of artist and you just do hip hop, but what if you just want to change genres and just change genre, right? Like. What are some artists that have really evolved? Hmm. Um, I'd say the Bee Gees would be one. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Beatles as well. I'm trying. Let's think more like around our time. Um, one that's really smooshed up the genres a lot. Hold up, I got this. I'll think of it. Like really, just just changed. And also done it successfully because a lot of artists have tried to change genres but not done it successfully. Yeah, that's. I mean, tough. you could say Kid Cudi. He tried to do he tried to do grunge, not well, but that was bad. He did. <laughs> I wasn't good. I'm trying to think of an artist that successfully switched genres and did it really well. Who's been very consistent? Like guys like Nas, very consistent. Like he just put out a new album yesterday. Yeah, Magic. Alicia Keys comes up with a new album, just so consistent. Mm. Um, but you're right that's why a lot of artists I think do stick to genres because they know that once they have a fan base in that genre they're going to stand by it and a lot of fans when people switch genres uh, like say Andrew is over their latest al- albums a lot of people didn't get it I know. Did you get the latest album? That's a good example. Injury Reserve. I was talking to Chris about it. He didn't like the new album at all mm. but, he, but he gets it. I on the other hand put it in my top five albums of the year. Really? So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. I listen to it a lot. It, uh, that first song, um, that that was hypnotic. I played that a ton. Yeah, I'm gonna pull it up right now. Uh, it was, but after the death of Grogs, like it was a, uh, it. It's almost like we expected that. It's not expected that, but like expected something different. It's a painful album. Yeah. Because Injury Reserve always wanted to do something different. And they're just like, damn, because because Grogs ain't here no more. This is our, this is like our way. We still have, we, he's still here with us in a way. Like even there's, there's a track on this album I remember that's all about constantly living and feeling like he's still there every day, but he's not. I think it was post postpartum from memory. This one, or oh, Superman That, the second track. Superman That is such a good track. This is my favorite song on the album. I think mine would be SS San Francisco or Wild Wild West or Knees. Knees is just oh, such a heavy track. Yeah, that, that's, that's the one about Grogs in the yeah. This video. Um, oh, yeah. So highly, highly recommend you guys check out Injury Reserve. Uh, for our Jungle Beats peeps, you guys know what's up with Injury Reserve, I hope. Yeah, my yo. And also a shout out Richie with a T, the married man now. Is I'm he? very happy for you, man. Same guy? Same girl, sorry? I believe so, yeah. Nice. I'm very happy for you, man. And uh, I don't know. I wish you luck on the journey. It's uh, still fucking sad. This one just, I don't know, it's something very hypnotic and I love it so much. It just kept getting me. I kept playing that over on Pete. Yeah, it's just a lot of genre mashing and a lot of abstractism. And it's, uh, I really, it really makes, it just really makes me, this is the album where I was just like, I remember I was making a lot of beats and 
It was like as much as I'm making shit that I'm, I'm as much about learning. It's like it's already been done. And what I want to do with music is definitely make shit that no one's made before. Yeah. Yeah, well, isn't it more exciting to make something that inspires people to make shit that sounds like you instead of making something that sounds like someone else's shit? Absolutely. That's just how I feel. You, you want to make it different and better or different or better? Not necessarily better, just different. Something that I can be happy with. Like if someone can resonate with shit that I, that I make, that I really love, that might not be widely appreciated or loved by others. If a few people connect with that shit, that's enough for me. Good for you, man. Like- Pretty much, I just want to do what Kit Cudi did. Just make music for people that were like him. I want to make music for people that are like me. And if I can help yeah. them fucking get through life, then that's 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 what I'm here for. If I said to you, let's get in a studio, give me a beat, you be my uh, Park Corey. Okay. And I'll be the Richie, Richie with a T. Okay. What could happen? Could uh, that happen? I would, it could happen. Maybe give me like another year or two to hone my craft. <laughs> Done. But, uh, but yeah, man, I would first of all ask you, what do you envision? What do you feel like? And you could be like, I feel like this or just go with it. And I would just, I would just basically, the way I go about shit is I'll, I'll find either a sample or a lot of sounds. I'll find the fucking drums that I'm after and I'll just, I'll always work on the drums first or the melody. And then it's all about just, getting structure first. And mm. once you have structure, then you mix the things that make that structure, you do different variations of that structure. And then you just like kind of mix and match until you just find something that works. It's a long process. I've thought <laughs> about this a couple of times, yeah, a few yeah. times about like, hmm, I wonder if we could ever do it. I wonder if, no, we could. I wonder if we would ever do that. Cause there's a lot of things I wanted, I, I could do and want to do in this life. And I would do a lot of writing as you know, as you see, as people yeah. see. And I talk a lot and I communicate a lot. But when I talk, the words don't usually rhyme. It's just <laughs> talking. And I mean, they don't have to rhyme. That's just, well, no, technically not. But if it's rapping, rhythm and poetry, would you say that, are, would you say they still don't have to rhyme? I don't think it does. I feel like, of course, rhythm and poetry means like poetry, is rhyming and it does sound better because when things sound the same, it's catchier. Yeah. But shit don't have to rhyme. You can still make something catchy without okay. it rhyming. Hold on, hold on, because I I don't know how artists make things rhyme and rap so easily. I don't know how like you, like <laughs> I think it's just a different a different mind the way their minds work. They just they just have a good understanding of words and they just have everything at the ready like a gun. Each little fucking bullet is a word and they just find the right ones to fucking punch out. You see, I think I know words well. I do a lot of reading. I do a lot of talking. I think I'm not very good at many things in life, but what I've become good at, I think, and I feel is communicating, mm. is stringing words together in a coherent sentence. <laughs> and, and, and sometimes if I'm really honest with myself, I see those words resonating with people, inspiring people. Mm. And I don't even like saying that, but if I'm just really honest with, with how it's sometimes received, I'm like, hmm, I'm not very good at many things, but that thing could be one. So what if I, what if I made some of these really like great writing pieces on philosophy and ideas and just life and you just put it in a song? Yeah, why not? Because it's a song, music, Receiving music, like I want to make, what if we could and I could make people feel the way I felt or we felt when we heard Kids See Ghosts? Mm. Like, Imagine if you had that power. That's the thing, like, yeah, if you don't, if you, you don't have to make shit rhyme for it to be dope. Like mm. you, you just, you can make anything sound dope just through understanding or just figuring that shit out. Are there any notable artists successful artists that you know who don't rhyme um off the top no but i do know there are a few rappers that don't rhyme all the time or like a lot of rappers that like will, will do rhymes but they will have a lot of verses which don't necessarily rhyme but uh not off the top a little b Oh yeah, little, yeah, but little bees are. <laughs> That's the base god right there. Shout out, little bee. <laughs> I got one felony. 
I got two felony. I got three felony. I got four felony. I got five felony. No, he kept going? He, dude, he goes up to 12. No. And after he gets to 12, he goes, bitch, I'm Bill Bellamy. And that's the track. <laughs> Who's Bill Bellamy? Uh, is that the fucking the guy, guy with a lot from of the felonies? Bill Bellamy. Is that the guy from the... I don't know. Not Bill Belichick. Not Bill Bellamy. I can't remember who he is. I feel bad now. Yo, these mics be so good for ASMR, bro. That's all right. Dude, do you know how popular it is? Unbelievable. Yeah, especially in countries like, uh, I guess, Korea or just places where food and, yeah, it's just like, it's it's crazy how popular that shit is. Why? Because some people just like it. Some people just- Well, that's a stupid response. Some people just <laughs> like it. Some people just like it, bro. Some people love those sounds and they just really find it calming or just- sexual or just yeah i i'm the same with you man like i, I find that shit more uh uh what's the word what's the what's, what's the word for this face mm. Cr- uh, not cringe no but like not it's, eerie just like it's like uncomfortable yes i feel uncomfortable when listening to someone eating chicken this close to a microphone while licking their fingers that yeah. is that is uncomfortable to me like that yeah. Like, nah, nah, yeah, it's uncomfortable. But some people love that. Some people love that shit. <laughs> nah, 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 that's... <laughs> but nah, dude, if you wanna, if you wanna write some shit... If you, you had s- a, a visceral reaction. Yeah, yeah, that, that's my reaction to that shit. You were uncomfortable right I was, now. I was uncomfortable then. Like, see how you feel. See, I'm not, I can keep, I'm okay. <laughs> I'm more familiar with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you want to write some shit yeah. and you want to send it to me, I'll, I'll happily check out the shit you write. I still write every week. When I look at Toby Nwigwe on stage and he's commanding that audience and he, with his words and his energy, it's inspiring. It's like, huh, what if you could do it? Well, you can do anything. What if you could? You can do anything. It's just a matter of putting in the work. Fuck. Like anything, man. So many things. I actually read this thing from Currents the other day. Currents is a rapper who, uh, he just put out his new album. And I don't necessarily believe this quote to be 100% true, but just the way that he said it. He's just like, just do what you said you were going to do. People respect that. And you will always be able to make some paper because motherfucker know you're going to handle your business, whichever field you're in. I swear, bro. Which I don't think that's true 100%, but just the idea that he said, just do what you said you were going to do. No, and it's trustworthy. Tr- exactly. It's like, if you just set out and do what you want to do, the best of your ability, people will respect it. And most of the time I feel it'll end up going because if you're just putting in that work, because a lot of people don't understand, they're just like, fuck, why am, I, why am I making it? Why am I getting to where I want to be? Because a lot of the time they're just not putting in that extra work. Do you remember that J. Cole documentary where he was still doing yeah. shit, but he wasn't putting 100% in? Sometimes in life you get to a point where you realize I have to sacrifice a lot of these other things in order to get to where I want to be. Like I know that that's what a lot of this year was. As much as I'm upset with myself about not getting the way I wanted to be, it's because I didn't sacrifice enough. I'm still happy with where I am and what I'm achieving, but I just know that if I sacrifice a lot more of things that I knew that I could have sacrificed, I would have been a little bit more higher. Well, you're making an investment in your future self. Yeah. That's what we have to realize. Yeah, exactly. By the temporary pain and discomfort of just fucking sitting down in front of that I don't know what you sit down in front of. Computer? Mixer? Whatever. Yeah, just just PC. Right. Yeah, and also time, man. We have limited time. But we waste so much of it. Yeah. Like, if we're honest. Yeah. And I love wasting time. <laughs> like, straight up. No, hold on. See, <laughs> see, that's the thing. If it's deliberate, if it's deliberate, I think, I don't know if that's a waste of time. If you're deliberately reading, playing a video yeah. game or like, doing something society judges, yeah. is that a waste of time? Not to me. But if you say, I'm going to study for an hour and then your phone just notified you and now you're on your phone and then, oh, hold, oh my God, an hour went by. That's different to me. Yeah, it's, it's different. To me, that's a waste of time because you procrastinated and didn't do what you said you're going to do. 
Oh yeah, if I'm studying, my phone is away from me. Because if I do hear that buzz, yeah. I will check it. Cause I'm like, oh shit, what if it's my friend that needs something? And then I'll be like, oh shit, I got this new responder on Instagram. Oh shit, this video. And you can just get lost. Yeah, yeah that's right. And I'm a very distracted motherfucker, so. It sucks you in. Yeah, I can see you playing with your nails. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah, I'm just keeping them clean, you know? Shout out Amy. Look at it. Look how beautiful yeah, I'm, sure, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure all the Amy's are watching. <laughs> Every single one. Um, no. She's like my best friend from Sydney. She's the best. Shout out. Shout out. Rich, they say rich people have money, but wealthy people have time and money. Mm. Oh, isn't that? That's a good one. Put that in a rhyme. <laughs> so like dope shit like that. Like make it rhyme. Like put like, I want to be like this. What if I, what if we could be, I'm, the, I'm like the Socrates of rhyming. The, you know, Socrates, the, the Roman philosopher. Mm. Well, that didn't work. <laughs> But imagine if you got if you got made a name for yourself in a field where rhyming was what it made it, but you did it without rhyming. Or maybe you just did it with a few rhymes. Because I feel like every now and again think shit's gonna rhyme. Like I feel like there'd be there'd be a fan yeah. there'd be fans that'd be like, this isn't rap because it doesn't rhyme, but there'd also be fans that'd just be like, This is dope. What I don't actually have to rhyme. Yeah. And you would invent a new subgenre of rap. Now that you want to talk about doing something different like you're trying to do? That's innovation. There we go. Innovation. That's Elon Musk shit. Yeah, that's that's how I think. I'm just like, if something doesn't exist or if people feel like that you can't do it because it's not within a certain box, why the fuck not? And then does something that doesn't exist or is very, very rare come from a combination of things that are common or a combination of things that already exist that you're melding together? Mm. Is that, what that how you would create that? Yeah. I think a lot of it's things that are already in place, but then a lot of it is just you. Mm. You, 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 yeah, that's the, that's the factor. The, you're the you that some of these lecturers want to squash. Yeah. No, I don't think they want, they intentionally want to squash your personality. They don't. But they, they want to, they think the ideal best version of, of a professional is someone who is professional, of like a music professional, someone who's professional. Yeah. But by forcing you in that hole, you can squash other parts of you. But that's how I feel. I feel like if I want to be who they wanted me to be, I would have to sacrifice a lot of my personality for that. And that's my best quality. I'm like, you want me to get rid of some of my best qualities in yeah. order to, to give you what you want? Yeah. It's like, I'm just, I'm here to learn. Mm. Well, they are right in some regards. There are times where I am, in, I am inappropriate at the wrong times, but most of the time it's fine, I feel. Well, that, that is, that's something to be learned. Definitely. There's a time and place. That's the thing that I'm learning with it every year. With every year, I'm, I'm learning more and more. There is a time to be yourself and there is a time to not interfere. Man, it's crazy. This uh, really reflecting on this year. I think years are good because they help separate uh, life. I think so, yes. I think years are important. It's like- breaks down, it gives you an opportunity, a forced opportunity to kind of reflect. Well, hopefully hmm. reflect. If you were to say, have one word or maybe three, but if you can go to one, so 20, 2020, 2019, 2018, can you remember each of those years and a word that would summarize those years for you? 2019. Do you have any off the top? That yeah, you already 2020, have? mental health mental. for me. Okay. Uh, 2019, what were we doing 2019? 2020 was like COVID. So 2019 was JBM, we were going Jungle Beach. Was that when we were still going hard? Uh, uh, was, was that 2018? I th we may have been going, I need to look at the time stamps. I think 2018 was like Jungle Beats. Like I just want to fucking smash out as many videos as popular and just fucking love music. And I think 2019 was, was that when you were in Singapore? I think so. So I think 2019 for me was like, like reevaluation or just like- Yeah, it was. So it went from like Jungle Beats, reevaluation to mental health. And then this year has been knowledge. This year has been like learn. I feel like each year there's like, of course there's always gonna be multiple things, but what's the one thing that like stood out the oh, most? Oh, okay, I got you, I got you. Because it, 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 to me, it's represented by where I'm taking my health yeah. governs a lot of like, it's, it's the anchor for me. It's my field, it's my profession. It's 
top of mind every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This year, growth. Growth. Right? Growth and building. Yeah, look at your boy. But also like what we did with business, what I'm doing with Strength of Saad, like business has really, it never been in a better place, uh, whether it's helping people, uh, influence, like numbers, um, output. I mean, just do a lot of output, mm. right? It's another word. 2020, it's inward. We're breaking down. Mm. I was like f- actually doing a lot of like fasting from information even. Yeah. Like I was n- trying not to consume as much. Which I think is healthy for certain periods. Sometimes it's nice to just have a lot of time to think with your thoughts and your thoughts alone yeah. without any interruptions. That's right. Absolutely. 2019 may have, ah, adventure. Adventure. It would have been adventure because that was one of, adventure, connection, risk, Mm. discomfort. Yeah, I think it's a a nice way to look back at things. Just find a few words that brings it all together. And normally those few words will just bring apart all the memories that made up that year. That's 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 a good question. Really makes you think. Yeah. And this year, growth, building, consolidation. And then next year, what's next year? What's 2022? What I do mean, you want it to be? What do I want it to be? I want t- this year has been knowledge. I want next year to be. Mm. That's, that's, yeah. I, I still don't know. I, I know that next year I just want to be pretty much still learning, but just putting in more effort with my own shit. Effort? Yeah, I think maybe- It will come to an end in July. I think next year it could be sacrifice. Sacrifice. I feel like- every, Sacrifices. I feel like every year that passes, when it, the things that I achieve, I never achieve them to the way that I want to achieve them because I'm just, that's, that's just me. I'm just hard on myself. So I think I wouldn't mind a year where I was harder on myself and I did fucking push myself harder, maybe being a, a worse mental state, but maybe it might push me to a level where I need to be. So then you could ultimately be a better version of yourself in the future after that. Exactly. Okay. I don't know if it's the healthiest way to go about it. Like we need we need bouts of unhealthiness. I, I do. That's what I believe. Like, like some not of everything's them, going to be balanced. Some of the most most interesting people and most successful people are people that have big periods of their life. As I actually remember you talking about something similar about this, where they had those moments of whatever the word is we just said. <laughs> Imbalance, chaos, yeah. working all day, every day. Like I remember you mentioning about people that might've had really troublesome uh, parenthoods or just bringing up or just certain elements of their life, which was really traumatic. That can sometimes bring forth the best in people that pushes them to go harder than other people. From their upbringings. Yeah. Like yeah. Some, like some of the most successful people, especially in the music industry are people that have really traumatic experiences. Yeah. And as much as you don't wish that upon them, it does, it does push them. And it helps uh, give them something, cr- it gives them content and cr- creativity to write about. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Jay-Z. Passion. You know, uh, Kanye was very interesting because he he was one of the first guys in, in, in the early 2000s to change the game. Yeah. He was going up against Curtis and it was... Was it late registration or graduation? I think it was graduation. Graduation. Who's going to sell more? And it was this it was. age of gangster rap and new, newer school. New age of hip hop. Uh, like more vulnerable, experimental. Like, they, they, yeah, they, they, he, they would call him soft. And 50 Cent never recovered from that musically. That's so interesting. He still put out bodies of work. Yeah, nev- nothing ever came close. But he never, I think his last best body of work was the, was the one he did for his movie. Get Rich or Die Trying. Yeah, that was a good album. I don't think he had a really a, a good album after that. I, do, I think his first album, classic, The Massacre, amazing. Get Rich, Die Trying, great. But I personally don't believe he has any other good albums. He has, he has a lot of good tracks from his other albums, but also the fact he got surgery and then he got rid of his lisp. So that was like a personality trait gone as well. Oh, did he? I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure he got surgery to recorrect his jaw. I could be wrong though. But I'm pretty sure I remember reading something about it. But the lisp, that lisp is what defined him. And then 
But yeah, Kanye wasn't a guy who came from like this terrible upbringing, but he experienced a whole ton of adversity once he got in the game. Yeah, from his mother dying at the hands of a plastic surgery that he funded, mm-hmm. um, to t- just really tough breakups and. Um, oh yeah, true. Kim Kardashian's with that uh, guy that was with Ariana Grande now. So that white guy, I don't know what he's that comedian dude. He's a comedian. Well, I'm talking about even Amber Rose, um, yeah. when he eight oh eights when he made it was amazing. That's my favorite album from Kanye. Really? Yeah, eight oh eight is my favorite Kanye album. One hundred. Amazing. amazing. It's so minimal, it's so emotional. And also Kid Cudi was pretty much a part of everything on that album as well. Really? But production wise? Um I think just the creative process. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he was a part of pretty much the whole creative process of the album. Amazing. What's your favorite? So you said uh, Injury Reserve in one of your favorite albums of the year. The mm-hmm. I have my top five, I'm pretty sure. What Not is, in order. Well, tell me approximately. Uh, also, Little Sims. Mm-hmm. Uh, I Might Be Introvert is in there. Um, Little Sims, Injury Reserve. Uh, JPEG Mafia, LP2, or just LP. That's an amazing album. Um, also, hang on, I can bring up my ish. I can bring we up had J. Cole, The Off Season. That was in my top 10, but not in my top five. Uh, As Irish Shad, that's my second favorite album of the year. That album is front to back, incredible. But my favorite album of the year is by uh, Faux Chatterton, which is a, 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 a French uh, rock group. Really? Mm-hmm. Well, really- Really beautiful album. The album's called, uh, what is that? Uh, Pala, Pala Diago. That's my favorite album of the year. Link me that. Yeah, yeah, it's it's just, it's French. It's beautiful. The instrumentation, the singing, the videos, everything about it is just pure art. And I really love it. Mick Jenkins' uh, album as well was like Elephant in the Room. That's like just outside top five. But that is also an incredible album. That's probably one of his best. It was just a really good year for music. So what about Tyler's? Call me if you get lost. Uh, probably just outside of top 10. Really good album still. I played it a lot, but because it's so many, the whole albums is just elements of things he's already done. It just didn't hit it. It just didn't hit the same. Like I still love that album and it's still like amazing. And I love pretty much nearly every track, but there's nothing on there that is like new, new Tyler to me. That's why, uh, like that's why I've, um, what was it called? His other album before that, Eagle. That's why Eagle was so good because it was fresh. That's why Flower Boy was so good because it was fresh. Ooh. Like oh. they were fresh Tyler sounds. Whereas uh, Tell Me, See Me If You Get Lost was just like still really good, but it was just like all these old elements meshed together. So I still love that album, but it was also just such a good year for music. So, would you would you think about do you listen to Doja Cat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was really impressed by Planet Her. I liked the production on it a lot. I liked a lot of tracks on there, but a lot of the structure. A lot of it was predictable to me and a lot of it was, I don't know. I feel like a lot of it was a bit safe or just not experimental enough for me, but I do agree that it is a good album. If you want experimental, that's a different question, but. <sighs> it is a good album. It's just, I just wanted more from her. Okay. Have you listened to her before? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Planet Pink was the last album, I think. Okay. So that was, that was actually, I actually preferred her last album more than the new one. Okay. So you have context. Yeah, yeah. Max O'Cream. Oh, I didn't listen to his album, but I love Maxo. His flow. Maxo Brody, Maxo Brody. Yeah, absolutely. Just another one of those guys who, I don't know if there's, is there any of the guys that sound like that? Maybe from the South, but none that I can think of off the top. He sounds Southern. I don't know if he's from the South. But then we have two of some of the, the world's biggest artists, Drake and Kanye. They don't really come close to the top five for some people. Not even in my top 30. I don't get me wrong. I liked a lot of elements of Donda. I just didn't go back to it. I just went back to like certain tracks like Off The Grid or Jail or uh, I can't see. I can't even remember it. <laughs> it's just as much as I enjoyed a lot of elements of Donda, it just wasn't memorable because there was nothing about the album that screamed, this is new Kanye. There was nothing on there that was really new for him. I felt it was just like a lot of, there was a lot of new elements, but of just things that he's already done and a bit more minimal. I don't, I don't know. I just didn't go back to it. I just never wanted to go back to the album because there was, there was so much other music that was out that I was like, I'd rather go back to this. This is more interesting to me. This is more innovative to me. Man, or Vince Staples. Oh, sorry, I forgot that. That's in top 10. That, that, that Every track on that album is good. Him and Kenny Beats Slade. Wait, did you like the new Mick Jenkins album? 
Did you listen to it? Yeah, I did. Did you like it? I don't remember much from it. I think I like tracks. Bro, I thought you'd be fucking having a hard dick for that shit. Dude, it's incredible. I really like the Mick Jenkins album. Mm. And Scotty Pippen, and especially his little, his Tiny Desk concert where he does that. Oh, oh I was tripping. Oh, that, that's a good one. I was definitely tripping. Oh, that's, that, that's, that's my favorite song off the Bro. album. Oh my goodness. The live version he does for that Ooh. on the Tiny Desk concert Let's go. is so powerful, man. Okay. I uh, was pipping. Uh, Mick, everyone, type in Google. Mick Jenkins, Tiny Desk. If you don't know about Tiny Desk concerts, Bruh. they are such a good ace one. So two it's, like, it's the last no. track. So you'll probably- Two weeks ago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two weeks ago. So just- there should be a, there should be a. Here it is. Oh. Ooh. Tripper. I was definitely tripping when I think about it. It's called Scotty Pippen. be doing the same thing like man's lost in the music right now his eyes been closed the whole time Like, I'm fucking wow, you got my body. That, that wow. shit's powerful to me, bro. Wow. Like, See? You, can, you can tell that whole song, he's like lost in it. Like, it looks like he's about to cry, man. 
wonder what that means to him. I would love to know. <laughs> like he looks like. Carlos, make some noise for you. <laughs> now he comes back. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you don't know Mick Jenkins, the most consistent, he hasn't dropped a bad album or mixtape ever, in my opinion. Like that's, that's his name now. Like people are just like, why aren't more people talking about Mick Jenkins? Don't get me wrong. People know who he is, but the level that he's on compared to other artists. Yeah. Isn't that big? No. He is consistent. And in my opinion, this new album is probably among his best. I put it on like level with like the waters, man. Oh my goodness. His discography is so strong. Yeah. And also the, the mixtapes that we remember we reviewed that aren't on Spotify. Yeah. The, 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 he did three of them. Oh, that's right. So elephant in the room. Incredible. Uh, the Circus, incredible. Pieces of a Man, incredible. Healing, healing component, component, incredible. That was your favorite oh, album of that year. Oh my goodness. Can we just pause for a second here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. THC, we bang deep. Take it back. That's like early Jungle Beats in the radio oh. studio days. Oh, that's right. 2016. Waves, incredible. The waters, waters, exceptional. Oh my goodness. I need to listen to this stuff again. And then before the waters, I believe, was the tree, something the tree. Oh, it's not even on here. Oh, it's not. It's okay, trees and Trues. Trees, trees, trees and Trues. So that's also a good album. That was his first one that I know of. And he's got heaps of mixtapes as well. Everything that he's ever released, in my opinion, is is dope. It's not good. It's great. Yeah. yeah. It's almost, this is going to sound weird. It's almost like, no, it's not. I was going to say it's too conscious. It's too sophisticated. But then we have Kendrick. <laughs> But like he's like he has similar characteristics to Kendrick from a sophistication and comprehensiveness yeah. standpoint. This is like eight years of consistency though. That's beautiful. I honestly would have thought eight years of consistency would have gotten him a lot bigger, but maybe he's happy where he's at. Because you know, he's kinda like he's a to me he sounds he's a bit of a loner, he's a bit of a stoner, and he just he just like I think so, Yeah. So I'm like trying to say what's his biggest song? Uh, probably jazz. It looks like this. Oh my goodness. And that music video was so good. I took an all oh, that. Took an it's a that, really good video. That Look at that. 70 million. Next biggest one, 26 million. And that's from the same album. Oh, Bob with a one this time. Is just a, so. Interesting. 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 Just oh, to tried to tell me it's good. Last in the sauce. Uh, what, what's so impressive about that song? Um, uh, what was, called? what was that song called that he just did? Tiny uh, Scotty Pippen. What uh, Scotty Pippen? So impressive is about his, his vocal uh, de dexterity. He was oh. able to go deep, and then he's able to sing, sing and sing well. Yeah, and quite high, and then just without even like a second later, he goes switches from exactly. the singing straight into the verse. Yeah. And the emotional switch as well as the tone shift is different. Like that's why I think he's closed his eyes and he's lost in it because. I think he just knows to, to, to perform this song to best of ability. He has to get fucking lost in it. I f it's interesting what closing your eyes do. I find closing my eyes when I train, uh, when I'm weight training, uh, when I'm when I'm, it helps me feel the movement more. I, I lose. I'm not distracted with this. What's in my visual sense, and I can feel the movement. I can feel the yeah. the muscles being stimulated and switched on. I think that's what it is. You're you're getting rid of one of your senses to stimulate other ones higher up. Like sex. You, some people close their eyes when they when they're seeing pleasure. It's true. No. Eating. I can. F it's sex. Why do we? No, but we, we, we take a spoon of some food and we close our eyes. Yeah, because like, mm. you can really not only just like. You can visualize it, but once you close your eyes, you can just taste the things a lot more. But that's instinctual. You know, people just do that naturally. Yeah. Huh. It's true. You get rid of one sense and other senses amplified. <sighs> um, I can't, I, I, damn it. <laughs> I just like, I ain't got it. And it's practice though, right? The, like some of these people go to schools to practice singing, like, but some people get a natural, like the weekend. I was talking to someone about this out there. There's a student in my school Jackson, shout out the homie. Yeah. And he is an amazing singer. And I was like, bro, like I'm, I've rapped a bit, but I, I want to get better at singing so I can like start recording my own shit and my own other stuff. Not just myself, but so when I work with other people, I have a better understanding of singing. And cause he's, he's incredible. His voice is like, holy shit. Mm. And then he was like, honestly, man, he's like, like you said, you either got it or you don't. And it's mostly just putting in the work. If you want to do it, Look up videos and shit. Just train. Train your voice every day. Right. Fucking learn shit. Play it with just, like just oh, every shit. day. Just work on your voice. Train, motherfucker. That's what he said. It's like, look, 
It's not as simple as, look, I'll fucking catch up with you and we'll fucking have singing lessons and you'll be a good singer. No, you have to train your fucking voice constantly. And that's what he did. He didn't, he had no professional training. He just trained himself at a young age. And now he's a dope singer. Train motherfuckers. But of course he's like, but he also said you got to do your don't. So you, you could- you So you know. can have both, but you can still refine it. Yeah, exactly. Like if, if you're not a good singer, you can still train and be a decent enough singer that you could probably make a career of it. But of course, if you have that next level understanding, then you're going to be like fucking Adele or some yeah, shit. Yeah, increase your ceiling. Yeah, 100. <sighs> On my own. On my own. So I feel like I go, I'm better lower. Because you know, you know, you listen to so much music, what, what I, you rap along with. Like when I, J. Cole did an interview with, What's his name? The charismatic motherfucker. Oh, Nadwa. Nadwa. I haven't watched it yet. Okay, 50 minutes. I watched it on two times speed, but it's cool. Um, one th- <laughs> one thing that struck me was, cause they go into deep history about like records and stuff. I'm like, not that interested. Yeah. But one thing that struck me is like, um, Nadwa asked about his breath control, like how he got so good at his breath control. Mm. Uh, and, and Jay, he said, Cole said, like rap along with the music you're listening to. Like you gotta, you gotta practice it. You gotta rap, so rap along with the music you're listening to and you'll get better at seeing how other artists control their breath and when to do it. Mm. And um, not something, I don't think anybody really knows about me, but because I love music so much and the reason I remember lyrics and sing along with lyrics is, and cause it gets, gets you in an energy and a vibe. I don't know if you've yeah. ever done this. You'll read the lyrics out loud and you'll rap them. Yeah, I do that sometimes. So I, when I was a kid, I used to do that a lot. Um, and like um, rigor mortis, Kendrick Lamar. I was oh. so blown away. Yeah. Got me breathing with dragons. I crack your egg and your bastard, your bastard. I got you. It's fucking hectic, man. Kendrick's on another level with that shit. His breath control on that song. Like I really try and like challenge myself when, when I do it. And it's like, whew. same with like Denzel Curry's ultimate. Oh, and that's I like the yelling. Gun, da, that's da, da, true. Da, 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 down to the streets. And maybe he did a competition where he had people come on stage to try and do it. And not many people can do it, bro. It's hard. Cause yeah, you're right. Not only are you controlling your breath for long periods, but you're also expending more energy. Yeah. To, to exert yeah. yourself. Yeah. So I found that interesting with like practicing singing, training, practicing rapping, rap along. Train. Train. No, it's something I actually want to try and do more next year. Cause I'm, as if you know me, I fucking suck remembering lyrics. And a lot of the time is because, oh, yeah. a lot of the time is because I'm so focused on the production and the feeling of the song that that's enough for me. But yeah, when I was a lot younger and sometimes still today, if I look up a track in the lyrics and rap to it or sing to it, normally I remember the lyrics. I just don't do that as much these days. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it, it can, if you want to rap, if you want to sing, it can be a good way to practice. Yeah, I remember when Childish Gambino's Freaks and Geeks came out. I love that song so much that me and Mark Santo Martino, who was one of my first homies in radio, shout out Mark. We, uh, we learned that song. And after like looking at the lyrics for like two days, I knew it off by heart. And no, I was like, know. and I don't think I've ever known many songs off by heart, but it's yeah. just because I put in the work. Exactly. That's all it is. It's like, I know I can do it. I just don't. It, it, it's a, that is an example of what's possible if you struggle with remembering things. Yeah. Like, I just have to why can you remember songs and lyrics? Will you sing along with them? They're catchy, they're memorable, but you sing along and read the lyrics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Kanye, I could, I could, who knows how many Kanye songs I can, you play the beat and I can get it. Gorgeous. Oh. Dun, 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 if you want it, I okay. need it. Not paying attention to chances, devil dances, and eventually answers to uh. the call of autumn. All them falling uh. for the love of Baldwin. Got cut with 30 rocks. Oh. <laughs> it's a, it's our one. I just love so how like good. sometimes, like, you know, when people might play like the first half a second of a song, but they'll go to skip it or something. And within that half a second, you're like, wait, I know what that song is. Right? Yeah, you, you know, it cause you, you know it's, it's like tricked in your brain. It's a part of you. First rap battle I ever lost. And I had this, hey Chris, you wanna see me? You running like a squirrel up the tree. So I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm like a little kid and stuff. <laughs> and I had this whole thing planned cause I was supposed to be the rapper. And this one dude was feeling like he could beat me in school. And um, he had this, this rap, uh, no, nah. this whole thing, he said, man, you know what, you gotta go first, you gotta go first. So I spit this whole long rap, and he's like, he's like oh, okay, cool. And he said, yo, uh, his response to my rap was, yo, what's up? My name is Chris, so let me tell you one thing, you smell like piss, right? <laughs> and everybody's like, ah! Everybody started running off, so 
I lost my first rap battle. That's probably the reason why my raps are so simple now. There's way more simplicity, just get to the point, you know? Penitentiary chances, the devil dances and eventually answers oh. to the call of autumn. All them falling for the love of balling. Get caught with 30 rocks, the cop looks like Alec Baldwin. Inner century tantrums, based, based off, off inner city tantrums. tantrums. Based off the way we was branded. Face it, Jerome get more time than Brandon. And at the airport, they took all through my bag and tell me that it's random. But we stay winning, this week has been a bad massage. I need a happy ending. And a new beginning, and a new fitting, and some job opportunities is lucrative. This the real world, homie. School's finished. They just stole your dreams. You don't know who did it. I treat the cash the way the government treat AIDS. I won't be satisfied till all my niggas get it. It's hip hop, just a euphemism for a new religion. The soul music of the slaves that the youth is missing. But this is more than just my road to redemption. Malcolm West had the whole nation standing at attention. As long as I'm in polo, smiling, they think they got me. But they they'll try to crack me if they ever see a black me. I thought I chose a field where they couldn't sack me if a nigga ain't shooting a jump shot running to track me. But this pimp is at the top of Mount Olympus. Ready to the world's games, this is my Olympics. We make them say ho, cause the game's so pimpish. Choke a South Park writer with a fish stick. <laughs> I insist it, y'all get up off of this dick. And these drugs, niggas can't resist it. Remind me when they try to have Ollie enlisted. If I ever wasn't the greatest nigga, I must have missed it. I need more drinks and less lights. And that American can a peril girl in just tights she told the director i'm trying to get into school he told her take them glasses off and get in the pool it's been a while since i watched the news because like a crip set i got way too many blues man need more bad news i was looking at my resume feeling real fresh today they rewrite history i don't believe in yesterday and what's a black beetle anyway a fucking roach i guess is why they got me sitting in fucking coach my guy said i need a different approach because people is looking at me like i'm sniffing coke it ain't funny anymore try different jokes tell them hug and kiss my ass x and no kiss the ring while they had it do my thing while i gotta play strings for the dramatic and then that whack shit act like i ain't had a belt in two classes I ain't got it, I'm coming after whoever who has it I'm coming after whoever who has it You blowing up, that's good, fantastic That y'all, <laughs> it's like that y'all I don't really give a, a fuck, fuck about, about it at all Cause the same people that try to blackball me Forget about two things My black balls Oh, acapella How powerful is it when Cause he got his own beat in his head You don't need a metronome Nope And, and what I notice is artists sometimes like Kanye particularly, when he does live versions or he does acapella versions, he comes with more like an aggressive energy. Like his recorded versions are often like karma. Like they're more tempered, yeah. but like that, that's not the same. Arr. He's got this grr to him. Yeah, You don't hear that on the record. No, you're right. A lot of his live ones do have that grr to it. I, I wonder if there's, I wonder if maybe if like recording wise, the, it just doesn't sound as good. You see, I, I don't know. Like maybe he's in a different state. Like for example, his blood on the leaves of BBC Music. I yeah. think it was this one. It, it, it was, he gets so aggressive. I think it was, a th no, it wasn't this one. Was it? Oh, this is beautiful, what he does here. Oh, this is so nice. See, the good thing about Donda, the best thing about Donda was there was elements of Jesus to it. That's the best part about Donda. What part do you feel had the, the best elements of Jesus on Donda? I can't remember for the top, but I remember when we were reviewing the album, there were lots of elements of all of his albums on there. And every time I heard a track on Donda that had elements of, of uh, elements of um, Jesus. Jesus, I was like, I feel like Jesus was like a prelude to another album that was like going to be like the Jesus 2.0. That's just how I feel. I feel like when I heard Jesus, like as good as it was, I was just like, damn, I feel like he could flesh this idea, this idea out more. I really feel like that he could have just had like another version of Jesus that was like, like my beautiful dark twisted fantasy version. Movie. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I could see it. I could hear, it, I could feel it. And I, I really hope that he does it eventually, but I think the time- but see, and that came with an aggression, that's anger. He, the Jesus came from emotion, frustration of being- uh -oh. But it's still there. To the fair skin. But he just spazzes the fuck out on SNL here. 
You see his broke nigga racing his tent, don't touch anything in the stove. Just standing there, he ain't moving a muscle. Make a mistake, probably on prison. The all in the Hamptons bragging about they made. Different. It's different. Very different from the recorded yeah, energy. But it's so good. I, I, this energy is more, it's more human. Animalistic, human, yeah. emotional. Like, like I, if I'm, I'm, I'm curious why he didn't bring this energy on it. Or well, maybe, because I can feel the frustration. But maybe when he's recording, he likes to dial it back a bit. So when he does do it live, he gives them different variants. Okay, okay. Like maybe you. if he recorded it in this way, then when he performs it, I don't know. It'd be interesting to know. Yeah. Yeah, that's a powerful performance. This one's really good. And the visuals are just, it just it gives so it good. like some more like fucking. What's the word? It's just, it's not crazy. It's like- It's dark. It's dark. Moody. Oh my God. Yeah, that's crazy. Unbelievable. Yeah, that's bro. a performance. That's, that's easy. It's like, it's just like shit. In another lifetime, like, hmm, maybe in this lifetime, who the fuck knows? Killer Mike and LP didn't make it until like their forties or, or late thirties. I mean, well, I guess LP, Got pretty, like still had a lot of successful stuff earlier on. Same with Killer Mike, like with this Pledge series. Mm. So they still had a lot of work that was like okay. on this level. But when they formed to make Run the Jewels, you're right. They, they, did make it to a, they did make it to a level which was beyond what they both would have thought they would have ever got to. Incredible duo there. And best friends. But like, I see, I see potential. When I look at people, when I see things and I look at myself, I like see potential. So I'm do like, I. So like, I see potential in you. Like, fuck man. Like- Oh yeah, I see potential in you too. It's true when you meet someone you, and you learn more about them, and they they let themselves like they let themselves out, so you learn more about them. That's when you start to be like you just see all the potential. And then I see what we do with Jungle Beats by accident. Yeah, that was an accident. Accident, and I'm like, I see. Okay, if enough, if, if you if I make enough money in this field, right? In general, well. We did a we did a we did a st we did a show. We did a one hip hop show a week, a radio a radio show, right? Yeah. Well, the first question I ever asked was, "How do I make my own radio station?" I wasn't even thinking show. I'm like, "Fuck a show, yeah. let's do a station." Tyler the Creator did that. Did he? Yeah, dude. He didn't like a lot of the radio, so he he, he has his own radio station now in America. It's called Golf Wang Radio. Is it? Yeah, and he goes on the round every now and again, and he has like a bunch of people that he like kind of not hand picks, but like they go to him. He's like, yeah, I want you my radio station. He has his own radio station. Is this worldwide? Is this like a state? Just just American. Wow. Okay. Exactly. There you go. Yeah. Legitimately, he started his own radio station. So hip hop is not still to me not represented effectively in Australia. No, it's not. I had this conversation with Chris the other day. It's about like, there are still so many people that are just older white men, not to be precise, that still control what goes on in Australia. Like at the moment, there are so many new artists in Australia that are doing like, that are doing hyper pop or doing like a lot of other genres that are exploding right now, but no one is supporting them because they have so much control on what they want to be released. That's why so much hip hop, like the Bliss Nessos, the Hilltop Hoods, the Illies, is so dumbed down, so formu formulaic, for formula formulative, formulative. But there's just all the music that is being projected in Australia on a mainstream level is controlled. So that it can be, Basically, so that old white people and people within, like, it's, they just, they just, like, it's safe. Standard industry shit. Yeah, no, Australia is fucked right now. As the people that are controlling music in Australia and have the money are just not letting anyone with anything outside of a certain box to be, to, to make money off it. That's, that's, a, 
That's why like money's so important. Because yeah, I want to say fuck fuck your fuck your standards. Yeah. Fuck that bullshit. Yeah. We'll do it ourselves. Exactly. And that's where I'm at. That's why that's where so many Australians people in the music industry are at. Like trust, there are so many motherfuckers. That's why there's so much a big thing about being independent these days. It's hard as fuck. Only a few people can successfully do it because of how hard it's to do. And so look, man, life is long. So shit. If I can leverage this industry and be successful in the industry I'm in now and profession I'm in now, then I, I take that equity to the next industry. We're starting to ready. <laughs> we got kicked off our, our hip hop uh, show, right? In yeah. that station we're at. And that's energy is still in me. Yeah. I don't know about you. No, it's still there as well. Like why did we get kicked off? Because we're using a space that no one was using to begin with. And we're creating content for people that are listening to it. Yet and apparently- and they were very sensitive to the to the words that we said. Yes, on, which, on the air. Which honestly, like, come on. Yeah, like um, th- that's we talked about it on Jungle Beats. Like, you go look at that. Uh, but okay, if you're the owner, no one kicks you off. Mm-hmm. You own the shit. You own that shit. Jay Z. Until you own your own, you can't be free. Yep. It's it's that's so powerful. It's like no matter how much you climb your way through things and get to where you want to be, it's true. If you're still working for someone else. You want it in control. So because they can tell you no at any point. Man, unless someone else does it in the next five, ten years, if I got the if I got the equity, and I got the, the space and the mental space and time, I'll I'll, I'll we'll Joe Rogan hip hop for this this country. Oh yeah. Let's fucking lead this country. For hip hop and music, and like we know between us plenty of local artists. Yeah, I would want, I'd, I'd be like, look, if you're a young ass, you make shit, just honestly come to us. And if it's not good, I'll tell you outright, but to keep working, I don't give up. But if your shit's good and no one else is supporting you, we'll fucking be a platform for you. And fuck your Spotify, we'll be the Spotify for live radio. Yeah. Or, or maybe it goes beyond that. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't have to be a station, but I feel like a station legitimizes it to be on it a does. frequency. It does. Like a hot 97. Yeah. Power 105. Yeah. They're, and they've all got their personality hosts as well that people know them for too. And, and then we can we can hire people and work with people and they can come on and they can do their own thing. Like we like they can we can hire a jungle beats, like they come in and yeah. do their thing on on air, like we did. Exactly. I don't know how much money you need. I have no idea how that begins. Me neither, but it is something that definitely I want to be a part of in the future. Cause yeah, one of the, my biggest grinds with Australia is just the wrong people are in control and they just don't believe in, you know, new art. They just, they just believe in old art and just doing that same shit, which is just not what it is. I'm putting that on a bucket list. Oh yeah. I've got a big ass bucket list. What's going on? And that's how it should be. I'm a very ambitious person. I feel like every week I have new goals and then I'll Do you write it. them down. You gotta write them down. I don't write any of if them. If they're down. that meaningful to you. Everything's meaningful to me. <laughs> But if I, the way I look at it is if I wrote all this shit down, it would be too overwhelming for me. Okay. Well, what's, is there one in particular that is very ambitious? Is this one of them? My main three goals right now, I'd be a good person, Mm -hmm. learn as much as possible and just get better at making music or just understanding music. And three is, it's kind of soft, but I want to fall in love. That's number three. That's not soft. Life is love. Life is love. But I haven't fallen in love for like- if. It's been like since I was like 16. And that's going to be a way different love to now because you're a well a different person. Yeah. You're an adult now. Like I've loved people on and off every year, but it's just, it's just not that, it's not that strong love. Not like die for you love. Exactly. I haven't had like die for you love like since a very long time. Wow. So that's, they're my three things I want right now. Basically be a good person, learn and do what I want to do and just find love. On that note, let's get up out of here. Wait, you're not going to give yours? (laughs) My goals? I'm talking about my goals publicly. Okay, fair, fair, fair. All right, right. On that note. On that note. You got anything else you want to say? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I got a big old dick. (laughs) Hey, if you know, you know. And all those ladies now be hopping in your DMs. A whole (laughs) bunch of two of them that are still listening right now. That's just me being like, yo, we've had some nice conversations, but- I still like that silly side of me. So That's right, baby. You got to give them that little- That's you. You got to give them that little flex. You, that you little, got fucking blonde, pink uh, hair. You got to give them that little fucking- uh, oh. Damn. Damn, son. See, 
If it's so big, it's not that. You might you, shit. It's, you might kill a bitch. You might kill a bitch. I nearly have. Yeah. <laughs> they've looked at me and they've been like, oh man, I don't think I can go anymore. Right. And I'm sitting there going, damn, we're just getting started in this. You just stare, stare, stare them down like a prey animal. <laughs> yeah, it's hot as it's hot as fuck, bro. I've had I've had some fun. It's been nice talking life. It's been nice. To, it's been nice talking shit. It's been nice catching up. Absolutely, man. One hundred. We'll keep it rolling. Hundred percent. We'll do rolling. something now. All right. All right. Chimps, jungle beats. Ah. One day, inshallah, we will. Oh yeah, we just we just on our own paths right now. We just figuring shit out. And uh, I know, like like I believe, I believe if we just keep hang like surrounding ourselves around amazing people such as ourselves, I think shit surround work. ourselves with people such as ourselves. I think shit'll work out. I think shit'll work out as yeah. long as we just keep meeting mm. new people constantly and then finding people with maybe more aligned goals. Just help other motherfuckers and they'll help you. That's just what I'm hoping. That's what I believe. On that note. Let's find love. Let's find love. Love, peace, let's, let's and chimps. Let's find some love and chimps. Does the chimp sound like that? <laughs> 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 so fucking loud. <laughs>